Hello? Hello, shop, anybody? What's going on here? How the devil did you get in? The door was open. Oh, no, don't tell me. What? Somebody's been in. They've taken all the spirits and the cigarettes. And you can bet you're in it. It's been marvellous. Hey, it wasn't me. I only came in for some chewing gum. No, but somebody's been in, up there. Some thieving. What a marvellous way to start the day. 12p. It gets dark at these mornings, doesn't it? It does. Are you all right? Not so bad, love. I just wish God had made us light whiskey. Then we'd improve as we got older instead of going to the way. Oh, it's you have to blame for row, then, is it? It is not a row. It's poetry, is that? Oh, I'm glad you told me. I shouldn't have known. Well, I've got to back where it's a bit quieter. John's cup of tea. Oh, you've read the man, love. John Bright have any special songs when we first met? I suppose we must have. Oh, I can't remember what they were. How did you meet him anyway? At a party. Then we made a date. And were that it then? Did you know you were in there? Not really, no, because he never turned up. He'd had that much to drink, he couldn't remember what arrangements we'd made. Well, you must have died. Well, I weren't right, please. I know I would have ever happened to me. What a lovely smell that is, eh? Traditional English fry up. Lost that in our house, you know. Can you do us two eggs, bacon and fried bread? We can. And can you teach our Vera how to do it? Because I think she's lost the use of a frying pan, so as a weapon, you know. Oh, and a cup of tea, love. Get it, Oh, that's better. Thank you. Oh, Have you ever thought that in 20 years' time, your dad could end up like him? Like Jack Duckworth? Right. Yeah. He will not. I won't let him. A present from Devon. <laughs> Just some clotted cream. Mm. Oh, Thanks. thank you. <laughs> I'll have it with my clotted peaches. <laughs> so he had a nice time. Then. Oh, mm. very nice. It's such a pleasant part of the country. The only problem was trying to fit everything in. <laughs> Smashing. Well, there's not much happened round here, as the Mavis. Oh, except Percy's budgie got out for a bit. Oh, dear. And Mavis got engaged. There were no tells with her love. Mavis? <laughs> Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. To Derry? Oh, yes. Well, I knew you were seeing him again, but, oh, well, that's <laughs> wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. And they've named the day. Yes, the 26th of this month, so you'll be getting an invitation any time now. It must all have happened very quickly. Well, you know what she's like, romantic, impulsive. No, I mean, no, we have known each other for a very long time. Oh, yes, of course. Let me see the ring. <laughs> Oh, it's lovely. They can do out with plastic nowadays. Read. Oh, you, you must tell me all about it. Look, um, let me buy you a drink at dinner time. And I've such a lot to do this morning, what with having just got back. Yes, all right. I'll see you in the Rovers uh, about one. Yes, fine. Bye, right. then. Right. Bye, bye, bye. Thanks. Thank you. Um, about these invites. What about them? Well, uh, are you going to send Derek one? No, correct me if I'm wrong, but you haven't clapped eyes on him since the engagement party, have you? I haven't. When he had that talk with Victor. Yes, well, I mean, he, he's very busy, Rita. Sometimes he has to be away from home for a day or two. But... Well, I know, but... Have you tried ringing him? No, not yet. I, I thought, well, I'll give it till tea time today, and if I haven't heard from him, well, then I'll, I'll ring him. But I, I'm sure it's nothing, really. I mean... Well, I mean, we're mature adults, aren't we? We don't have to be ringing each other every five minutes. Been a bit more than five minutes, hasn't it? So you want it fixed for tonight, though, won't you? Yeah, well, Bill wants to city pop in later on to do it. And you've no alarms, nothing of that sort. No. Well, you've always relied on somebody being on premises, haven't you? Aye. Uh, that's a mixed blessing and all, isn't it? Supposing I come down and found somebody doing that. Or bet. Or bet, aye. She's the lodger. Mind you, she's away, away on holiday at the moment. Be the right time then, didn't you? Yeah. She did. Give us a big box of tea bags, love. Do you know we haven't got a single perforation in all of that factory? All right. Hey, no top is there? I've had a break in, love. Oh, no. Mm, sometime last night. They've cleared a few shelves for me. Oh, I don't know. There are some folk, aren't they? They want locking up. They do. Yeah, they do if we can catch them. What's the odds on that, anyway? Well, oh, see, I'd he'll want to look for prints, but this being a shop probably mean they'll be spoiled for choice. Then we'll see if your neighbours heard out otherwise. What makes them do it? 
Hey, and don't you tell me it's unemployment, because my Bertie never had a job for long enough. He'd have never stood to do out that, that's honest. It's laziness with most Tom love. All villains are lazy and greedy when you get down to it in shops like this are sitting ducks. This is the fourth that's been done in this area. Still, better shops than houses, isn't it? Yeah, well, I suppose so. I just wish they picked on somebody else, though. Pancakes? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Three sausage, two bacon, one sausage and bacon. Now, two of the sausage are with mustard and one of the bacon's with Dad, mustard. Dad, There's no mustard on the... Got a cup of tea for us, then? Yeah. I thought you were never going to come. Had some work to do on by. Uh, excuse me. Do you remember me? Remember you? Yeah, I was the one ordering until he came in and suddenly I'm invisible. It's all right, Curly, I'll serve you. Madam here's a bit doolally at the moment. Not the only one that did. Now, say that again. Three sausage, two bacon, one right, sausage no. and bacon. Do you want me back this afternoon or what? Oh, yeah, if you can manage to give us an hour. I'll be here. Oh, I see you. Romeo's arrived at last, then, I see. Sorry. Three sausage, two bacon. You wouldn't be going anywhere near the shopping precinct, would you? Me? Only if you were, I thought I might catch your lift on your pillion. She's joking. I think she's trying to. Hey, let's drink and all. Right, to all up. See you this up. See? Do you get other offers? I wouldn't have thought Phyllis for your time. But Louise Hooper might be. Dad, I'll come. Of course I'll come. She never said I wouldn't. She just don't want to come in empty house that side. So I won't then. Just pick us up, can't you? You know, somewhere not too far off. Right, there you have it. Oi. Hi, Debbie's uh, not said, oh, tell us about that ladder, Rob. Not to me, no. No, she's still seen him. Nope. Well, probably all best left well alone, eh? Till it all blows over. What do you think? I don't know. I thought you were supposed to know about women. Me? Hmm. Oh, no, it's cars, isn't it? Well, I said our Debbie was a woman. Oh, no, she's not far off. Though she could be more like a mule when she wants to be. Mm. Stubborn as anything. Know where she gets it from, don't we? Oh, do we? Mm. No, what I was thinking, the more I go on at her, the more she's going to want to see this lad, right? So what I thought is, I'll try saying nothing, right? I'll go nowhere near the cafe, see what that does. To the end of this week? Yeah, I might as well, yeah. Oh, by the way, did you hear that Alf Roberts had had visitors? His what? Been burgled. Spirits, cigarettes, money. Oh, no. Maybe did you hear that? I did. That's dreadful. Yeah, apparently there's been quite a spate in the area. Small shops and off licences. Oh. News agents? Uh, not as far as I know. Hmm. Bitter night. Make sure you've got a clean night on. Look, that's not funny, Rita. I have nightmares about that kind of thing happening. I do. I, mean, I check these doors and windows twice before I go to bed. Ah, oh, not for much longer, though, surely. Pardon? Well, he's going to have Derek to take you away from all this. Uh, yes, you will. So, why don't you go and meet Emily like you promised, and I'll wait here near the telephone. Oh, would you? I but... would, and then if anybody important phoned, I'd be round to the rovers like a scalded cat. Right, fine, thanks. Back. Bye, Mavis. Right, where were we? Mavis looking forward to the big day, then, is she? Yes, I'm sure she is. So that's uh, four weeks at... Uh... You could have been murdered in your bed, Councillor. Oh, thanks very much. It's a fact. Well, the only thing you can do nowadays is to make sure you're well insured. Then whatever gets taken, somebody else pays for it. Well, I'm insured, Ark, you know. You say this copper's coming round for this list of what's been, what's been taken? Yeah, I've just spent the whole morning making the list out for him. Well, I'm thinking... Uh... There's a lot of scope for imagination and all this like that. How do you mean? Well, what he means is, there's only you knows what's gone, so you can put down what you like. The insurance company's got to shell out, hasn't it? You're on a winner. There's nothing on that list that shouldn't be on. I'm sure. Because there'd be no honesty left in this world if everybody started them kind of tricks. Look, it, hey, I was only saying what some folk might get up to. Of course you were, yeah. Well, I didn't mean any people anywhere around here. It just might occur to some folk with less scruples than us. Yeah. Ah, oh, yes. Well, Emily hasn't been in yet, has she? Oh, I haven't seen her now. There's somebody here for you, love. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Rita told me I just missed you at the shop, so I've run most of the way. Yes, well, I mean, I haven't, no. Well, I, I haven't no, heard I from you. No, I know. I have been rather incommunicado. Uh, but... Oh, Derek has 
Yes. Well, oh, congratulations. Mavis told me the good news this morning. Yes, thank you very much, yes. Now, what would everybody like? Oh, no, please. Now, I insist a rather belated celebration oh. of your engagement. Mavis, what will you have? Could I have a medium sherry, please? And uh, Derek? Oh, oh, gin and tonic, then, please. Oh, so, Betty, that's... Uh, Mavis, we have to talk. Yes. It's very important. OK, my When will he be back? Do you know? Well, he shouldn't be long. He's, oh, he's, he's in and out, Holmes. Good. Oh, you're going to be able to manage to do that? Oh, that shouldn't be a problem, off. Great. Sorry, have I kept you waiting? Not a lot. Uh, I've got that list here somewhere. So, <laughs> this is the scene of the crime, eh? Well, I would say, from first glance, the man they're after has got nicotine stained fingers and has problems walking a straight line. Brilliant. Hey, don't I know you? No, no, I don't, I don't think... Yeah, you were driving your mate's car when he reported it missing. I never did understand all that. No, neither did I. I'll, I've got to go now, anyway. See ya. Bye, Jack. Bye, Mel. Right, 458 quid's worth altogether. Yeah, well, there's the cost of repairs to go on top of that as well, you My, know. My, but you've got a job on these days, haven't you? No mistake. Uh, caretaker from community centre just across the road there. No. Don't suppose you saw her out last night, did you? Car but, parked her out? Well, no, I did, of course, to look out, as a matter of fact. It'll be about 3.30. I was answering a call of nature. Oh, begging your pardon. Uh, no need. And I did happen to glance out at window. It all was as quiet as a grave. Not a drum was heard. Not a funeral note, as you might say. I see. So you didn't notice anyone umping 458 quids worth of booze about then? Well, if I had it done, I'd have been on to you fellas and we'd have had them all behind bars by now. Well, so good. I shall have to go. Uh, can I get you another? Um, um, no, no, really. I, I'm sure you two have lots to talk about, so uh, <coughs> I'll leave you to it. Bye for now. Bye -bye. Thank you. Um... <clears throat> I, uh, I was talking with your friend, Victor, at the oh, party. I might have known. No, please, Mavis, this isn't easy. Well, is that why you haven't been in touch, then? Something that he said? It was everything that he said. Oh! You see, Mavis, I'd always thought that... Oh, how shall I put it? That we'd each of us saved ourselves for one another. Oh, yes. Yes. So it came as a bit of a surprise to learn that you'd been on a walking holiday with this Victor and that you'd shared a tent with him. No, I'm, I'm not saying that this changes my feelings for you. Oh, thank you. But it has taken me some time to come to terms with this new idea of you as a... A fallen woman? Oh, no, no. Oh, but what about the fact that he asked me to go and live with him? I suppose he told you all about that as well. Oh, did he not? Oh, excuse me. I just thought I'd like to buy you a little celebratory drink. Oh, thank, thank you, you very much. Betty. Making plans, are you? Oh, I bet your heads are full of hymn numbers and floral arrangements. Oh, don't forget, this is supposed to be the happiest time of your lives. So, enjoy every little minute of it. No. No, he didn't say anything about that, no. Well, when he bought his cottage, he, he asked me to move in with him. In fact, he was quite insistent, but I said no, that I wouldn't. I see. So, you see, if I had been the sort of woman that you think I am, I'd be living in Saddleworth now and I wouldn't be here at all. No, Mavis, I'm, I'm not accusing you of anything. It's just that it was a bit of a surprise to learn that the relationship was what it was. Don't tell me that you haven't got any surprises for me. Things that you haven't told me. No. No, I haven't. No. Oh. But I must say, now that you've explained how you rejected his... his unworthy offer, well, it only seems to serve to bring us closer together. What do you think? Yes. After all, 
What's a shared tent compared to the rest of our lives that we'll be sharing together? Valerie's. She's got this video that we're watching. It's not one of them video nasties, is it? I don't know what it is. Hey, well, if it is, you'll keep your eyes shut, eh? Yeah, sure. What time will you be back? About 11, after the bit after. Hey, never mind the bit after the 11, all right? Yeah, all right. Just get your hands off you. It's mine, is that? Yeah. What do you need a crash helmet for if you're going watching videos? None of your business. You're not going watching videos, are you? Oh, am I not? Well, why don't you go and tell me Dad, then? See if I care. I'll tell you takes all the risks, shall I? Oh, go on, then. Me. I'm out there every night and I never know who I'm picking up, do I? Yeah, but has anybody ever tried to rob you? Yeah. Blonde girl, tall, frizzy hair, tries it regularly. Uh, 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 uh. No, but this is still a comparatively peaceful society. Compared with Afghanistan, it might be, but not compared with the sort of world most of us grew up in. <laughs> I'll never forget when those two had a go at me. One of them were a girl. Oh, I'm afraid to go out. In fact, I'll have to go soon unless one of these two gentlemen offers to see me home. You're in there. I've got centre to see to. Chicken. How much safer will you be when you get home? I mean, take Alf last night. He'd have been better off if he'd have stopped out. <laughs> yeah, but he does live in an off licence. Uh, Look, a mate of mine bought this dirty great guard dog to keep in the house, you know. Had it a week and somebody broke in. Now, listen. Pinched it. Never mind guard dogs. I'll tell you what's needed round here, shall yeah, I? Yeah, quite a bit is needed oh, in there, Betty. Uh, anybody want to up? Oh, I haven't mind another. Thought you were going. Yes, lads. What do you want, Kev? We're half a line, please. Yeah, make that two, please, Billy. Uh, can we have your darts as well, please? Oh, no, it's all right. I've got these. Well, you don't bring your own lagers in to go with them. Now, listen, Willie, I'm trying to tell you what's needed round here in order to deal with these criminals. All right, go on. I don't watch organisation. I agree. What is he on about? Sort of residence association, isn't it? Sort of, yes. Whereby we all get together and we agree to keep his eyes and ears open and report dead to, you know, suspicious in the area. Park car, anybody hanging about. I know the police are all in favour of it. Yeah, look. That's all right. Ah, I'll not forget this. I wish you would. Now, I don't mind volunteering to get this thing off the ground. I think we should start off by having a, a meeting and finding out who's interested. Which I hope will be everybody, because it's everybody's interest we're talking about. And then we can work out some sort of roster. I tell you what, I've just seen something I could have done without. Hey, what's up, love? Not another robbery. No, worse than any robbery. We were just passing bottom of Garibaldi Street, weren't we? Oh, wasn't it awful? Okay. It's me, Victor. Victor? Oh, what do you want? Could I come in for a minute? Please, Mavis. Thank you. Look, Victor, I'm only letting you in to tell you that I, I don't want to see you again. Not after what you said to Derek about the tent and everything. No, I'm sorry. I, I know I didn't behave very well that night. I can see why now. Why? I was in a state of shock, a prolonged state of shock. Oh, shock that anybody would want to marry me, I suppose. I told myself that our relationship was over, that it was no concern of mine if you were marrying somebody else. Oh, no. But it's no good. It's just not true, is it? Well, I don't see why it shouldn't be. It's opened my eyes, Mavis. Learning you were to become the wife of another man. And I can't accept it. I mean, I've tried. I've been trying ever since that awful party, but I can't accept it, and I never will. Well, I'm sorry, Victor, but you're just going to have to accept it. No. Not if it doesn't happen. Oh, I know I've no right to say such a thing. Not without saying something else as well. Something I should have said a long time ago. Look, Victor, I think you, you are... Marry me, Mavis. Leave this... this Derek. Leave him. And marry me. Dad! 
Well, in here. It's what I've just heard in the pub. It's about our Debbie. How do you mean? Mrs. Tilsley, Ryan's mum, you know? Yeah. She's just come in, she's seen this accident. Involving our Debbie? It's OK, she's not badly injured at all. Oh, well, Mrs. Tilsley didn't seem to think so. Well, come on, Kevin. Are you going to give us a right tale or what? She's been took to hospital by ambulance. It's OK, she was walking, she wasn't unconscious at all. Yeah, but what's happened? Are you going to tell me, aren't you? He was on the back of Daddy's wood bike. <sighs> the they both come off going on a corner. On the back of his bike? Yeah. I knew it! I knew! They're all I told her. Yeah, well. <sighs> Where is she now? In hospital, I suppose. I suppose Mrs. Tilsley didn't recognise her with a motor bike here. I knew it was her as soon as she says Daddy's wood. How? You say you knew it was her how? I knew she was gonna meet him. She had a crash helmet with her. So that's it. It's been both of you lying to me. Both of you been going behind me back. Oh. Well, I hope you're proud, lad. I hope you're satisfied with what's come of it. Come on. Shall I make some breakfast? Oh, a cup of tea will be all right. <coughs> Got a paper, Dad? Just look at you. It's a wonder you weren't killed. You don't keep going on, Dad. Hey, don't tell me what to do, lady. I'll keep going on because it looks like I have to. You could have been killed when you come off that bike. But I'm all right, aren't I? And that lad, Isherwood, he's a lunatic. I told you he was asking for trouble, but you wouldn't listen. Too clever to listen to what your father had to say. We weren't going fast, Dad, honest. We only come off because a dog ran out and Darren swerved so he wouldn't hit it. Look, I don't want any more argument about it. He rides that bike like a maniac and that's why I told you not to go on it in the first place. And you promised me, didn't you? You promised me faithfully you wouldn't go on the back of that bike again. Only because you kept going on at me. When I think of what could have happened. He's in one piece, that's the main thing. Look, you can keep out of this. It's been an eye up to me out as all this. I thought I could trust you. I thought if you promised, that was it. I could rely on you. Well, you're not fair about Darren. You're just prejudiced against him. Yes, I am. I'm prejudiced against anybody that's going to put you in hospital. And you're no better now, Kevin. You knew what she was up to and you never said a word. Oh, what do you expect me to do, Dad? Split on her? Split on her? You're not in the schoolyard anymore. She could have been killed. Well, I wasn't. And I'm going her out so I'll be late for work. Look, lady, you're not going anywhere. You're going to stop at home today. Dad, they'll be expecting me. Look, I'll call in the cafe and I'm tell I'll tell them you're not coming in. Right? You can take it easy and we'll see how you feel tomorrow. Dad! Look, I want no more argument about it. That's an end of it. I'm sick of being treated like a kid and I'm sick of being shouted at. Look, I'll tell you why I shout at you, shall I? Because I don't want to get a telephone call some night telling me that you're dead at the side of the road somewhere. I shout at you because you're my daughter and I care about you. I'll see you later. I've been looking forward to getting this. It's got a major article on Hayley's Comet. Oh, really? I don't know if you're aware of it, but it only comes round every 76 years. Uh, well, yes, I think I've heard of it. I'm not sure. And the next time will be 1986. Oh. And for the first time, we've got the technology to get close to it and take photographs. And the Yanks have sent up probes for when it passes other planets as well. Oh, you. you want about heavenly bodies, eh? That's right. Look, here's your best heavenly bodies in there. Just take a look at that. Never mind getting us closer to the planets. You want to be working out how you can get closer to one of them. Yeah, but it's not the same compulsion, though, is it, Mr Duckworth? I'm talking about man reaching for the unknown. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about, I know. Hiya. Oh. You look a bit under the weather. What's up? Oh, a terrible night, Rita. I've hardly closed my eyes. Victor came round here again. Did he buy it? Didn't he cause enough trouble at your engagement party? I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I don't think I'm going to be able to cope. I suppose he was trying to put you off Derek again, was oh, he? Worse than that. He wants me to marry him. You're not pulling my leg, are you? Vita, would I invent something like that? All right, all right, I believe you. I thought he didn't believe in marriage, Victor. Slow destruction of the human spirit. That's always been his line, isn't oh, it? We had some of that last night, but according to him, if marriage it has to be, so be it, he'll marry me. What did you say? Well, what could I say? Well, A, yes, B, no, C, maybe, D, shows your muscles. Of course. 
course, Rita, I said no. He did, eh? Well, yes, of course I did. Not that he took any notice. I mean, he was most, most domineering. He, he not only asked me to marry him, he told me I had to. By God, though, Mavis. I mean, isn't this what you've always dreamed of? Fellas falling over themselves oh, for you. You don't seem to realise, Rita. It's very disturbing. Oh, uh, it's a bit awkward now, but it's going to be wonderful to look back on. In years to come, when you're queuing up for your pension, it'll bring a smile to your face. I'll clear that table. OK. You're not leaving that bacon, are you? It's all fatty and horrible. I like it crisp. Get it down, yeah, man. They go mad for that in Africa. And when I ordered it, I asked for it well done. Ah, cut, Mr. Faddy. It's criminal throwing good food away like that. And when I say well done, I mean cooked properly, not like that. You're not at the rest of the now, you know. If I'm paying for it, I'm entitled to have it how I want. I'm in touch. We've got a communist in. Morning. Morning, Mr. Sugden. What can I get you? Oh, does it, thank you. I've not come to partake. You've come to see me, haven't you, Percy? I've come to see both of you. Now, I don't know whether you realise it, we've got an outbreak of crime in this area, and I'm proposing to start one of these uh, home watch schemes to combat it. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Sugden. We can't talk to you now. We're short handed. Hang on, hang on. That's what I'm trying to tell you, you see. Now, I've called a meeting to explain and launch a scheme this dinner in Rovers, one o'clock. I hope I'll see you there. Now, it's during the dinner hour, so nobody's got any excuse for not turning up. Well, we have. You might not have noticed this, Mr. Sugden, but when other people are on the dinner hour, that's when we're rushed off our little feet. This is a cafe, you know. Ah, this is a bit of a snag. Yeah. I can meet in Rovers tonight, if you like. You can tell me all about it, then. Best if I get an info sheet made out and a few copies made. Leave it with me. I'll see you get put in the picture. Or you can come to my house later on. I'll do your tatey pie. Do you do that to embarrass him, or do you fancy him? A bit of both. <sighs> You are so fancy, old Percy. Well, you've got to fancy anything that's available, haven't you? You've got to force yourself. <laughs> Hello, Emily. Good morning. Just pop round for a quick word about a wedding present. Oh. Betty Turpin passed your list on to me this morning, and I'm rather thinking of the bath towels. I, I wondered if you had any preference about colour. Well, I, I hadn't really thought. Well, you want something that fits in with your bathroom colour scheme, of course. Good point. Yeah, and, and the other thing was, would you like the monogramming? They do it at Simpsons. You can have any name on. It only takes a few days. I wondered if you'd like to have Derek and Mavis on them. Oh, honestly, Emily, my mind's in a turmoil. I just can't think at the moment. It'd be safer just to have his and hers. Rita? Well, Emily's a friend of yours, isn't she? Well, yes, of course she is. Is something wrong? Not wrong, exactly. You've heard that expression, too much of a good thing? Well, that's what Mavis has got at the moment. Oh, you see, Victor came round again last night. Is he still trying to put you off Derek? Well, it, it's not so much oh, that, really. here all day. He's matched Derek's offer. He wants to wed her. That's two proposals. Sickening, isn't it? Victor actually proposed? Yes. Was he serious? Well, he certainly wasn't laughing, and neither was I. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, maybe I, I mean, didn't mean... You know what Victor's like. I mean, how dynamic he can be when he wants. Well, I, I tried to explain that it was out of the question. She won't give Bigamy a fair year. You see, what Rita doesn't understand is that some of us don't like to hurt people. Now, I don't want to hurt Victor, but then I... I certainly don't want to upset Derek. Yes, but uh, somebody has to be hurt, Mavis, and it's not your fault. No, you've got to put your feelings first now. You can't live your life to please everybody else. It's just not on. You've got to disappoint somebody. Morning. Morning. Oh, Derek, do you fancy a cup of tea? Oh, no, thanks. I can't stop. I've just called in to keep you abreast of events, Mavis. Oh. I've just come from All Saints Church, where I've seen the vicar, and everything's fixed. September 26th, just as we planned. Now, you two ladies, make sure you get that day off. He's going to read the bands for the first time on Sunday. And, uh, oh, yes, he'd like to have a chat with the two of us sometime in the near future. Nice chap, I thought. Oh, good. Well, now, I'd love to stop, but I must show my face at the office. I'll see you this evening. D Derek. Yes? I'll see you this evening. Right. <laughs> They'll be thinking I've joined the brain drain at the office. <laughs> that reminds me. I saw something yesterday that I shouldn't. A list going round the office. They're collecting for our present. It's a tease made. Jolly good present, don't you think? Well, bye. Bye. Hiya. Uh, you haven't had your dinner yet, have you? Nope. Good. 
Because I brought fish and chips for us. Put the flakes out, will you? Really? Yeah. Where's uh, where's our Debbie? Don't know. Think she upstairs? Nope. Well, where is she then? Now come on, Kevin, and I want the truth this time. She's not gone down that flaming cafe, has she? Well, that's me. I don't know, do I? I don't know what you know anymore, Kevin. That's the trouble. Now look, if you've any idea where she's gone, you better tell me, right? I don't know. Honest. If she's gone down that cafe after all I said this morning. She'll put the dinner out. Eat the lot. I'm gonna find out where she is. <laughs> That's Daz and Gary's. I'll take them over. All right, but remember, you work here. I want you straight back behind this counter. Oh, Dale, two yeah, minutes. Make yeah. sure it is two minutes. Hiya, Deb. Right, sandwich is over. So, uh, how are you feeling today? Got some smashing bruises coming up. Where? Well, that'd be telling me, isn't it? Bike's going to be off the road in a few days. Just telling Gary. Are we having some sounds or what? I thought I told you to stay at home today. There's no need, Dad. I'm right as rain. But you didn't take any notice of me, did you? Because we're meeting this fella, I suppose. Don't start anything, please. And I'm very glad I bumped into you, sunshine, because I've one or two things I'd like to say to you. You could have got our Debbie killed yesterday. It wasn't my fault. Look, you can kill yourself, but you're not going to kill our Debbie. Dad, please. Shut up. Now, I'm telling you, you take it on the back of that bike of yours again, and there'll be trouble. Well, that's up to her, isn't it? It's up to me. I'm telling you, you take it on the back of that bike again and you'll end up in hospital and this time it won't be an accident, it'll be me that puts you there. Dad, you're showing me up. Have you got that? <laughs> Look, you can tell her what to do, but don't start on me. Look, I'm giving you a fair warning and stop that racket when I'm talking to you. Mr Webster, do you mind? I'm telling you this and I'm not going to tell you no more, right? Dad, please. Mr Webster, will you stop that, please? We expect trouble from the kids we get in here, not you. I'm sorry. You've been warned, right? Oh, please, oh, please, please, oh, please, oh, please. Oh, please. Now, I suppose you're all asking yourselves, what is the vital element in this scheme? A special uniform for you. Uh, <laughs> no, the vital element is manpower, because we have to have enough people taking part. Without sufficient neighbourly interest, we're fighting an uphill struggle. Frankly, I had hoped we'd have had a better turnout. Well, I think it's a very worthy idea, Mr. Summers. Anything that helps to fight crime must be useful. I'm certainly willing to take part. And me. If it's good enough for Mrs. Bishop, it's good enough for me. Uh, good for you, Mrs. Tilsley. Well, it's all right for them that's got time, isn't it? I mean, I'm at work all day and then I've got a house to look after, haven't I? I'm still not sure, Percy. What is it exactly you want us to do? Well, in a word, practice the habit of vigilance. You see a funny-looking bloke about, uh, keep your eye on him. A car you don't know in the street, jot down the registration number. And what's the point of that? Well, later on here, there's been a robbery. Now, that number of the car could be the key to it. It might be just what the police need to put their hands on the culprit. Hang on, hang on. This is snooping, this. You're asking us to be a load of coppers now. Oh, really, yeah. Mr Duckworth? Well, well, I'm very sorry. That's how it sounds to me. You're asking us to do the coppers' jobs for them. Yeah, yeah well, it seems to a lot of people, Jack, that what the police need is our help. Well, I read somewhere that where they have these neighbourhood schemes, the crime rate drops right down. You've got to ask yourself whose side you're on. Exactly. Very well put, Norman. Mm. Well, it still sounds creepy to me. Yeah, but wouldn't you like to know that your neighbours are keeping an eye on your house so you don't have to be worried about getting burgled? But he don't worry, love. He's got no worth being shit. Well, <laughs> tell our beer you said that. I shall tell him myself when I get back to work, which is where I'm going right now. Yes, I must get off and all uh, that. Health now, I can take it that you, Mrs <laughs> Bishop and Curly, will be joining the team. Yeah. And uh, you, Kenneth, will you be putting something in the paper to help us get some more recruits? I'll see you get a write-up. Thank, thank you very much. I'm disappointed uh, in you, Jack. And I thought you were going to be constructive and all. That was a very interesting idea about a special uniform. Uh, right then, uh, tomorrow I'll try. Just a minute, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Just one last word, ladies and gentlemen. Let your watchword be eternal vigilance. Yeah. Prevent crime by little forethought. Check your property and keep it safe. And don't give the criminal any opportunities. They don't need any opportunities. Right. Bye. Uh, exactly. Bye. Bye. Because if it's not nailed down, they'll nick it, some of them. Hang on. Where's my cap got to? Well, I had it when I came in. Hey, some beggars had my cap. 
Tell the truth, Babies Riley. Deep down inside, aren't you thrilled to have two fellas wanting you and competing for you? No. Well, I would be, I tell you. One for souvenir draw this. Puts you in with the like of Kustark and Liz Taylor. Oh, I wish you'd be practical, Rita. All right. All right, let's be practical. What exactly are you worried about? You know very well what I'm worried about, the situation. What you ought to be worried about is making damn sure which man you want to marry. Well, I've said I'm marrying Derek, haven't I? True. But at the time, he was the only one around who'd asked you, wasn't he? Now you've got a choice. For your own sake, make sure you choose the right one. Well, I have chosen. I've chosen Derek. Supposing Victor had asked you first. Well, he didn't. Yeah, we know that, but he's asked you now. Look, all I'm saying is this. If you prefer to marry Victor, then you'd better unchoose Derek fast. Come on, Mavis, this is the rest of your life we're talking about. Well, I can't turn Derek down now, can I? I mean, you heard what he said this morning. They've already started collecting for the present at the office. Well, I don't know what you think's so funny. So that's what all this hangs on. That's why you're marrying Derek, because they've had a whip round and buying your teas made. Oh, not just that. I mean, it's all organised. Wheels have been set in motion. Oh, keep calm, keep calm. Mavis. Look, Victor, you can't keep coming in here like this. Not when I'm working. I mean, I've got a job to do. It's not fair to Rita. Don't worry. I shan't stop her working. Who's worried? I mean, we're not exactly fighting customers off. In fact, I'm going to put the kettle on. You and Mavis will want to be private. Oh, Rita. I have to see you. Not for anything you might call a reason. Just a, an impulse I had to obey. So I told them at work that I was going to the post office, jumped in a taxi, and here I am. Well, but won't you get into trouble at work? Well, they never know. Anyway, I'm not stopping. I just needed to see you. Oh, Victor. You see, Mavis, I won't let petty conventions rule my life. You have to let your heart have its way. You have to listen to your emotions. Look, Victor, will you please let me have my hand back? I'm, I'm engaged to be married. You're going to marry me, Mavis. You know that. There's no good in pretending otherwise. You know that's what you have to do, because deep down, that's what your whole being wants to do. <laughs> I'm marrying Derek. I mean, it's, it's all a rage. The bands are being called this Sunday and everything. It's high time you told Derek, you know. It's cruel to let him go on thinking he's marrying you. You know I'm right, Mavis. We belong to each other. Bye for now. Victor! Oh, Victor! Going out? Yeah. Who with? If I didn't know. Yes, I am. I'm going out with Darren. Well, Debbie, I've warned you, and I've warned him. If you go on that bike with him again, I'll find him, and when I do, I'll... His bike's off the road. It's been repaired, if you must know. Look, Debbie, why can't we sit down, just the two of us here, and discuss this? Because all I want to do is... I'll never forgive you for what you did to me today. Never. You showed me up in front of everybody. Yeah, I know I came on a bit strong, love. I mean, I didn't know what to set a girl afterwards. I was that ashamed. Look... Oh, I'll see, girl. I'll have a quiet word with her. Like you had a word with Darren? I mean, what must he think of you? Look, I don't give a damn what he thinks. It's you I'm trying to get through to for your own good. He's bad news, that lad, and it worries me to death every time you go out with him. You're just prejudiced. You just don't like him. Yes, I am, and I don't mind admitting it. But he can't stop me seeing him. I love him. Oh, give over. I knew you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't even try. Well, I'm going to carry on seeing him. And if you do anything to Darren, I'll stop us seeing him. I'll leave home. And you won't stop me doing that either. Debbie, look, come in and sit down. What am I going to do with her? Don't ask me. One way or another, she's going to get hurt. No oh, good you keep worrying about it, though, eh? Is it? Oh, that's great, that is, isn't it? Don't worry, it might never happen. OK, don't start on me. I mean, if it was you, I could thump you and knock some sense into you. But ah, Debbie. I don't know what to do, son. 
It's times like this I need your mum, is this? Oh, did I mention about Carl, by the way? Who? Oh, obviously I didn't mention it. Carl Stanton, my right-hand man at the office. I asked him to be best man this morning, and he's delighted. Oh, good. <laughs> First class chap, old Carl. No danger of him losing the ring or anything like that. <laughs> no, he was delighted to be asked. And he's looking forward to meeting you, of course. Well, they all are at the office. You're the subject of a lot of speculation. They all want to take a look at the woman who's caught the office's most eligible bachelor. <laughs> That's what the younger ones used to call me. Just a bit of fun, of course. Oh, I never minded a bit of good-humoured chaff. As long as it's clean, of course. You're very quiet tonight. Yes. Well, you've got a lot to think about, I know that. Oh, by the way, I've been thinking about the tea's made. What about it? It'd be best your side of the bed, I think. Derek. Hmm? You remember Victor? Oh, my word, yes. Who could forget him? Well, it's just that he's, he's been round to the cabin quite a few times just lately. You don't want to encourage him, Mavis. To be quite frank, I don't like him. He'll certainly not be welcome at our house after we're married. And uh, I don't really want to talk about him. No, well, it's just... Well, he's asked me to marry him. Is what? Twice. You can't do that. He knows you're engaged to me. You can't propose to someone who's already engaged. Oh, well, I've told him that, but he takes no notice. Well, you must make him take notice. Well, I've tried, but he won't. I mean, he's very dogged, he's fit to when he wants to be. I mean, he just won't take no for an answer. Oh, won't he? Well, we'll see about that. You leave him to me, Mavis. I'll sort out Master Pendlebury. He's gone too far this time. Today's special, isn't it? I thought we said it was spaghetti. We did. Till I come to chalk it on board, but I couldn't spell it. <laughs> you damn devil. I reckon your dad were right. You should have gone back to school. My dad's right about Nout. Not about Daz, not about me, not about Nout. He's only thinking of you, you know. Oh, why? it looked like it and all, didn't it? Coming in here, chucking his weight about. But it didn't do no good, did it? Because if he thinks he can stop me seeing Daz, he must be puddled. Did she say out this morning? Not a word. Did you? Well, what more can I say? Perhaps if you tried explaining to her that you went for Dazzle because you were worried about her, because you were scared she might get hurt. What do you think I was trying to do last night? Great move this turned out to be, eh? How do you mean? I don't know what we'll tear each other's throats out when we moved here. Well, it's certainly not the way I planned it, I can promise you that. The way it's turning out, though, isn't it? Kevin, our Debbie could have been killed by that clown of a boyfriend of hers. I have to try and make her see sense before it's too late. I mean, if I hadn't, what kind of a father would I be? Yeah, I know. So if you want to have a go at anybody, have a go at your sister. Not me. Thank you, Mrs McDougall. Ta -da. Yes, Brian, what can I do for you? Uh, keys, mate. Keys? Yeah, your car. Oh. I can't service it without them, can I? Never thought of that. <laughs> hey, listen, can you have it back here before four o'clock? I'll see what I can do, but I can't promise. Yeah, we'll do the best you can, will you? Yeah, OK. Hello, sailor. Bert, well, I don't need to ask if the holiday was good. It was fantastic. Mind you, two weeks in Thamers and Jungle and make a nice change from Rovers. Oh, I don't know. I don't think there's much difference. Oh, there is. Uh, I reckon the animals in the jungle are more friendly, for starters. <laughs> you heard about Fred. Yeah, better give us a ring. Bye, I can use on a short fuse, but sticking one on Billy Walker. Well, maybe he had one coming to him. Well, he might have had an all. But I mean, where does it leave Fred? It's not only his job that's up the spout, it's roof over his head and all. Yeah, I know. I don't suppose you know where he took off to, do you? Betty didn't seem to know. Oh, I've no idea. He could be anywhere. Oh, he could be, but he's not. How do you mean? I saw him in cot 20 minutes ago ordering breakfast. Well, what's he doing with himself, love? Did he say? Search me, he never said a word. A right misery he was. No, yeah, maybe there's good reason to be. I'm afraid this is all we have left, Mrs. Ogerton. What's that? String. This is all we have. Oh, yeah, right, that'll do. Right. 
Uh, is there anything else? Like that paper you've been reading print off at last five minutes. Oh, where? Uh, no, not that, just the stone. Uh, that's uh, 35 pence, please. Well, Thank you. it'll not be long now, will it? What's that? Your big day, you and Derek. Oh, no, no, it won't. I must say, I thought it was very nice the way your other young man took it. Very gentlemanly. Victor? That's right, Victor. Get on like a house on fire, don't they? Oh, I've seen them chatting away at your engagement party. Well, it's nice when you can all be mates together, isn't it? Some fellas can be rotten losers, you know. You don't know how lucky you are. Now, don't start. Oh, I can't help worrying, can I? What for? It's not your problem, is it? Oh, no, of course it isn't. I mean, Victor only wants me to marry him instead of Derek, and he won't take no for an answer, so it's not my problem, is it? I thought Derek was going to mark Victor's card for him. <sighs> yes, I know. But... Well, then, like I say, it's not your problem, is it? Well, look who it isn't. Larger than life and twice as lovely. No, it's you, is it? Ah, yeah. It's nice to be wanted. Look, Bet, if it's knockabout fun, you'll have to. You pick the wrong feather, OK? Yes. Heard what happened, did you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Better give us a ring last night. I can't leave you for five minutes, can I? I go off on my ollies, and the minute my back's turned, you go and stick one on the boss. Yeah, well, it's only what he deserves, innit? Yeah, so I heard. So where does that lead you? You still stopping round here, I take it? Yeah. Your sister's? No, not there. I stayed there for a couple of days, but I reckon I'd be better with a place of my own, you know. Where are you now? Trafalgar Street. Trafalgar Street? Yeah, OK, I know it's not much, but at least it's a roof over my head, isn't it? You know, until I get back on my feet, get a job and that. So you're not fixed up, then? Well, no, no, not yet. I've, uh, I've got somewhere to go this afternoon. Don't worry. Some little turn up, it always does. You can't keep the likes of us down. We're survivors, you and me. Fetch us two teas, will you, love? Right. Time for a quick in before you go back? No, I don't think so. I'll get them in. I think I'll shoot off. Thanks all the same. I'll we'll call off and see someone on the way. Show yourself. Hello there, I'm glad I've caught somebody in. Why don't you come in? It's all very much. I was walking down the back then and I noticed these ladders in your yard. Well, you'd have a job to miss them, seeing as they're sticking up nearly as high as the house. Yes, well, I know in your hands you have a perfect legal use. But to a criminal, they are an open invitation. I mean, if you can use them to get up to your back bedroom window, so a would-be intruder could use them to get in the house. I suppose so. So you'll not be offended if I, if I make a suggestion? Depends what it is. Well, when they're not in use, you chain them up. You know, so they can't be used for illicit purposes. Well, it's not very much, Percy, but I don't think you need worry your head anymore. So you chain them up, then? No. Well, if you don't mind me saying so, I think you're being very foolish. If he chains them up, how's he going to get them from the backyard onto the van? I'm not with you. Cos I'm taking them back to my yard this afternoon. Are you happy now? Oh, well, in that case, I'm sorry I bothered you. Only we can't be too crime-conscious, you know. Anyway, I'll be seeing you. Cheerio. Yeah. Tell her. Tell that, Percy. Mm -hmm. He means well, I suppose. Could have a point there, you know. Eh? Chaining things up. Like what? Like Percy, for starters. <laughs> <laughs> Trafalgar Street. What's he doing down there, apart from catching something nasty? Well, it seems he didn't have much choice, did he? I thought Betty said he'd gone to his sister's. He did, till he got under her feet, which took Fred face about two days flat. So he's not got a job, then? No. No, he hasn't. No on the cards? Well, he were off to Fox and Grapes this morning after summer, but he didn't sound too awful. What will he's experience at walking? Oh, yes. Well, till he tells him why he come to leave his last job. Well, he's not going to be daft enough to do that, is he? He won't have to, will he? Eh? What? The mates like Billy Walker. A Doberman? It's a dog. Well, I know what it is, but can't they be a bit nasty? Oh, they can be more than a bit nasty, Mavis. Still, I suppose if you need to keep people out. Who's talking about keeping people out? It's keeping Vera Duckworth and her mates working on those machines. Let's see if I can find a dog tough enough to face up to that lot. So if you hear of anything, let me know. We right. will. Oh, see you. Bad. That was me believing it. Derek, I didn't expect to see you till later. No, I know, but I've had a very good morning as it happens. And all I need now to make it perfect is lunch with my fiancée. Oh, well, that would be very nice. Right, what are we waiting for? Oh, just a minute. As, as 
suppose you, you haven't had a chance to speak to Victor yet? Uh, no, I have had a very busy morning, Mavis. Well, yes, I'm sure you have. In any case, it may not be necessary. Why? Well, I'm sure when he considers how foolish he must look, he'll probably forget about the whole thing. Oh, doesn't sound like Victor to me. Look, are we going to talk about Victor all lunchtime? No, of course not. Just, I mean, I'll just get my jacket. Hello, Kevin. Yes? She's here. No, I think you better ask her that yourself. Mavis, is Victor. Wants to know, can he meet you for lunch? Forget all about it, will he? Oh, what will I tell him? Uh, give it me. Victor, Derek here. Derek Wilton. Mavis's fiance. Look, where are you? Rovers? Right, well, don't go away. I want a word with you. I'll be round in about five minutes. No, Mavis is not coming to lunch. Sorry, Mavis. Lunch will have to wait. I'm going to sort out your friend Victor once and for all. <laughs> Unless I can tempt you to join me in a fruit juice at the Rovers. Oh, wild horses wouldn't drag me to the Rovers just now. Really? Oh. Not being barred again, have you? Oh. No, of course not. But you remember I told you that Victor had asked me to marry him? Yes, but I thought you made it clear to him that he was wasting his time. I tried, didn't I? But, I mean, you know what Victor's like. He wouldn't take no for an answer, so Derek said he'd sort him out. And that's where they are, in the Rovers. Yes. I oh, hope they don't do anything silly. Oh, not Victor and Derek. Well, they do say that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I suppose it applies to men, too. Why must you keep hounding her, making her life a misery? I've done nothing of the kind. You've asked her to marry you. Well, why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't you? She's engaged, isn't she? To me. She's not married to you, though, is she? Well, no. But she's as good as. All the arrangements are in hand. The invitations have been sent out. They've even started making a collection at the office. Well, I'm sorry, Derek, but I've not heard one valid reason why I should let Ma Mavis marry the wrong man. The wrong man? It's nothing personal, Derek. Believe me. I'm sure you've got many admirable qualities, but you just don't know Mavis. Do you know how long I've known Mavis? Time is of no consequence. How well do you know Mavis? That's the crucial question. I know her better than you do, that's for certain. But you don't, Derek. That's the whole point. You've never explored the inner workings of her mind. You've never probed her soul. You've never taken her by the hand and led her by example and inspiration into higher things, into experiences that she would never have been able to be capable of achieving on her own. But I love her. Love? What's love got to do with anything? We're talking about marriage, Derek. Hey, where are they? Desperate Derek and Valley of Victor. Well, it's no glass. Oh, no broken furniture? No bodies can fly over at bar yet? Well, no, that's I've noticed. Why were the eggs going on? You tell me, how do I know the lengths a fellow will go to to win the hands of a beautiful maiden? What beautiful maiden? Mavis. Mavis? Yes. Victor wants to marry instead of Derek, and Derek's come to mark his card. And I've been missing all that. You're slipping, aren't you, kid? I've been working today, I'm your pleasure. I'm buying my own semi. Steady job, excellent prospects of promotion, company car, and private health insurance. Mere trappings of the decadent middle classes. And I suppose you have something better to offer? I have to offer the most cherished prize of all, <coughs> freedom. Freedom? Freedom of mind, freedom of body, freedom from inhibitions, but above all, freedom to find contentment in her inner self. Mavis isn't like that. She's vulnerable. She needs someone to protect her to provide for her. No, she's strong, resolute. She has a deep yearning to spread her wings, not have them clipped and be locked away forever in some semi-detached suburban cage. No, I had hoped that we could be reasonable about this and perhaps all remain good friends. And so we can, Derek, if you'll only take notice of what Mavis has to say. Let her fly free, unfetter her, like nature intended. Mavis is going to marry me. No matter what has happened between you in the past, Victor, it's over. It's finished. So the sooner you get that into your head, the better for everyone concerned. Oh, he says, uh, 
We must be out of our minds, you know. Hey. We spend all day working our fingers to the bone, cooking, cleaning, fetching, carrying. What do we do when we get home? We start all over again. You want to think yourself lucky. Lucky? Lucky to have somebody at home. I'd give my eye to you to have somebody to cook for. Well, there's not much chance of that, is there? With my locked up aside the world. Oh, what do you want? You want a word, don't you? Look, Kev, if my dad said He you. didn't. Honest. I wish he'd try and see things his way for a change. With her out of town. Dad, listen. He doesn't enjoy getting on at you, you know. Well, he's got a funny way of showing it, hasn't he? Because he's worried about you, isn't he? He's right, you could have been killed on the back of that bike. All right, so he said, hundreds of times. Why does he have to keep going on and on like a crack flipping record? Because he happens to care about you, doesn't he? Honest, though. He's worried out of his mind over you. I'm not a kid, Kev. I just wish he'd stop treating me like one. I can take care of myself, you know. Guess who? Dad! Right first time? I thought you deserted me. Where were you this morning? Hey, one or two things to do, didn't I? Like what? Never you mind. Listen, how are you fixed for tonight? OK, why? Fancy a party. Were you? Who else? Great, where is it? Doggos. Should be quite a gig, as our lady's away for the night. So what time shall I see you then? Uh, I'll be there about half eight. Are you not picking us up? What, and have your old fella going off his trolley again? You do without that kind of aggro to have very much. If anybody's going off the trolley down there, it ain't me, Dad. No, of course it isn't. He behaves like a perfectly rational human being, doesn't he? Like he did with me in here yesterday. He was for that. He's a nutter. Listen, he's flaming talking. Hey, just knock it off, the pair of you, eh? If you want to have a Barney, go outside and have it. Sorry, again. He started it. It were you who had to I stick don't him. care who started it. Just knock it off. All right, all right, I'm going. Ah, fate. Don't be late. Hold on. <coughs> Hey, oh, the wanderer returns. Hey, friend. Uh, Jack. Hey, good to see you. Having a drink? No, it's all right. I didn't come in. For hey, no, come on, I'm in the chair. <laughs> His walker here. He's in the back, why? Go through and get him, Lynch. That hang on a minute, Fred. Don't you think you're in enough bother? Listen, Bet, I'm asking you, go through and get him, otherwise I'm coming around there, I'll get him myself. Having trouble, Bet? You've got a visitor. So I see. You wanted to see me? Yeah, I want to see you, all right. Okay. I've just come back from the Fox and Grapes, haven't I? I went for a job, dinner, A job that would have been right up my street. Oh, yeah? How'd you get on? I got turned down, didn't I? I was chucked out of there like a whippet with his tail on fire, wasn't I? And you'll know why, don't you? Do I? Yeah. It's like every other pub I've been in round here looking for a job. Some dirty little reptile's gonna put the poison, haven't I? And we don't have to look far to see all that he's doing. Now, cool it, Fred. This isn't getting you anywhere. Oh, yes, it is, but it's getting him through that door and a damn sight faster than he came in. All right, mate, on your bike. And don't bother coming back. Because the next time I catch you in here, you won't be walking out. You'll be chucked out with the rest of the rubbish. Just a minute, Walker. I haven't finished with you Oh, yet. yes, you have. Out. Look, come on, Fred. We'll have one down the flying horse. All right, Jack. Well, don't you think you're in enough flaming trouble as it is? Come on. You may be right. You're not worth mucking your hands on you. But don't think you've heard the last of this, Walker, because you're flaming well haven't. Go on, Jack. Is that all, Ken? Uh, there's just Tracy's coming. Oh, yes. Uh, here we are. You might as well take it, man. Yeah, never hear the last of it if I didn't. <laughs> oh. All right, Thanks thank very much. Bye. 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 Well, well, what? Well, what happened at the Rovers? Oh, there were no bloodshed. Well, I didn't think there would be. Oh, I don't know. A close run thing, especially when Billy Walker threw him out. Billy did what? It's not surprising. He come roaring in like a bad bull, shouting his mouth off. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't. I mean, well, I, I didn't think he had it in him, and he's always been such a gentleman. Well, when a fella like that gets his dander up. Well, why hasn't he been back to tell me then? Well, why would Fred G come and see you? Fred G? Well, who do you think I'm talking about? Oh, Rita Fagel without a man. Yes. Oh, never mind. Just tell me what happened between Victor and Derek. I mean, Victor was still there, I take it. Ready and waiting. Well? Well, they faced each other across the snug bar. Yes. And then it happened. What? They had a quiet chat. There were no fighting, no bloodshed, no broken furniture. Mind you, there's still time for it to happen. I was still at it when I left, but somehow I don't think it will. Derek were getting the drinks in, and Victor were rambling on about the joys of the North Yorkshire Moors in oh. September. Now, do you want to brew? Where are you going for your dinner? I couldn't. Suit yourself, but I've never met a fella yet. Worth starving myself for. Oh, Derek. Yes. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. 
I expect you wondered what I got to. I have been a long time. Yes, I'm sorry. It was Victor's fault as much as mine. He does go on a bit, doesn't he? I never realised he was such an experienced and enthusiastic walker. He knows the Pennines like the back of his hand. Oh, look, never mind the Pennines. Did you tell him? Oh, yes, I told yes, him. That I couldn't marry him and why? I certainly did. Good. Now perhaps we can have a bit of peace and quiet. Uh, there is just one thing. What's that? Well, although I did make the position crystal clear to Victor... Go on. He did say he would only accept it finally when he hears it from you. From me? Right. So I said I'd tell you. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for lunch. And believe me, I think I've earned it. I'm not a kid, Kev. I'm 16. All right. You're not going through all that again. All I'm asking you to do is think about what you're doing to us. Us? Yeah, us. All of us. Because the way things are going, there's going to be one almighty bust up in this house before long, I'm telling you. Well, it's not all my fault, is it? I'm not saying it is, Emma. All I'm asking you to do is cool it, OK? Eee, yeah. So much smells good. Bacon kidney pie. Great. How long have I got? Not got time for a quick and if that's what you're thinking. Yeah, I did. I didn't think we'd be eating for at least half an hour. Well, we are. It'll be on the table as soon as you sat yourself down. And what's the rush? Ah, Debbie's going out, ain't she? Ah, something special. A party. And to save you asking, yes, Daz is going. Well, just so long as you don't think you're going on the back, the back of that bike again. I'm not. It's still in garage, if you must know. I'm walking. It's only top end of Rosamond Street. I see. I'm going to a party, Dad. Lots of girls my age do all the time. She's right. All right. Just so long as you're in by a decent time. Look, I'm not saying you can't go. I just don't want you out all hours of the night, that's all. Sounds fair enough, Debs. What time? Eleven o'clock. Eleven? All right, then half past. And that's late enough for anybody in the middle of the week. All right, half past eleven. In the house? In the house. Good lass. <laughs> Can I have a light out, please? <coughs> I light coming up. <coughs> Hello, Miss Dogs. You're looking for me, are you? No, should I be? Well, I thought you might have something to report. Report? You know, a little untoward, unusual. No, I don't think so. No, the only thing I've seen this afternoon was Jack Duck was going to work. Now, that is unusual. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd find you here. Well, I'm not going to be going anywhere else. I'm assuming you've got my car. Oh, I'm sorry I couldn't manage it earlier, mate, but we, uh, we didn't find that slab punching to check the tyre pressure. Oh, OK, now, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all done. Oh. It's outside your shop, as sweet as a nut and rounds to go. Thanks a lot. Do you want a drink on you, do you? Nah, better get back if I don't want me to, mate. OK, see you, lad. Ta-ra. ta oh, <laughs> Here, what are you doing here? Oh, mate, I'm not looking for bother. I just want a word with Alpha. Me? Well, if I was you, I'd make sure it is a quick word and all, because the big white chief's still on the warpath. Look, Alpha, I wouldn't do this, but honestly, mate, do I'm what? getting desperate. Well, leaning on an old mate, you know. I'm not with you. Look, I'll, I'll have to find someone before. Do you mean work? Yeah, well, I thought with you being under council, you might know someone, you know. Look, I don't want you to pull any strings out like that. Just point me in the right direction. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll do anything, Alf. I mean, you know, I'll turn me I'm into anything. sorry, mate. There must be some at Look, we're, we're sacking people down there. We're not taking people on. I mean, I mean, get in touch with town all by all means, but they'll tell you the same as me. All right, mate. You want trouble, you come to the right kid. Now, hang on, Billy. He only popped in for a word with Alf. Yeah, that's right. Just pop out again, can't he? On your way, G. All right, mate. I'm going. I wouldn't stay here if you got on your knees and licked me flaming boots. Hang on a minute. What? Did he say you could turn your hand to anything? I've no choice, have I? Why? You know something? Yeah, I do. You? I may be able to do something for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we'll pop into my office first thing in the morning. We'll have a chat about it then. Right. Right, Mr. Baldwin, I will. I hope you know what you're letting yourself in for. No, not yet. What are you expecting, any rub? I make up offer I sent for. I bet it's a load of rubbish when it comes. What did you send for it for, then? It was cheap. Thanks for leaving us some tea. Thanks for making us us breakfast. Even slaves get the occasional lying, you know. I happened to be out last night. Have a good time, did you? Yeah, great, thanks. And before you ask, I come home when you said. Yeah, I know. I heard you. I thought you might. You just don't trust me, do you? It's not you I don't trust. I wouldn't care. Party were just starting to warm up when I left. I felt like I twig. Hey, knock it off the party, eh? You can't start all this again. I'm off to see if Mrs. Ogden's still taking on lodgings. OK, OK. I'll see you later, love. I felt like some manky little Cinderella. That's where I miffed when I looked at clock and said I had to go home. 
Well, you see what you want. Dinner. Well, it's only five minutes' walk. It's bad enough me having to sling me up. I can't expect him to and all. I'll tell you one thing. You better not let me dad know you come home that time of night on your own. Else we'd both be looking for new lodgings. It'd suit me. It'd be a relief to get away from this prison camp. I think I'm looking forward to living here in all. He's only Look, before you start telling me he's only thinking me own good, let me ask you how you'd feel if he started laying down law to you. Look, me. don't give me any of that. It's different for me. I'm a fella rubbish. Just get that teapot wrapped round your head. Look where you're going. You just got on my shoe. You shouldn't have such big feet then, should you? And you should have such a big mouth, should you? Cheeky kid. Ivy. You haven't got such a thing as a duster on you, have you? Funnily enough, Fred, no. And, you know, I always check for her come out of house in the morning. Handkerchief, yes. Door keys, yes. Purse, yes. Duster, no. I might have a mop on me somewhere, though. All right, Ivy, I only asked. <laughs> You're looking very smart for this time in the morning. Oh, I'm going for an interview, aren't I? Oh, love, that is good. Anything interesting? Well, it all depends what you sort of call interested. It's, uh, it's over at your place. I didn't know you could sew, Fred. There's other jobs in a factory a fella can do, aren't there? Look, Fred, what exactly did Mike Bowen say, love? Well, he said to uh, come over first thing in the morning and discuss the situation. I mean, he's a very busy fella, he's Mr Baldwin. Wouldn't waste his time if he had held summer for me, would he? No, of course not, love. Anyway, good luck. Hey, you here you are. For your shoe. Don't worry. It's an old little wash. <laughs> Ta, love. Always gives you a bit of confidence, Fred, if you know you're looking your best, love. Yeah, you're right there. How old were you when you got married, Phyllis? Not much older than you, love. But that's how it was in them days. Girls didn't have the chances they have today. Like travel, living it up, making summer to yourself. By gum, if I had the opportunities you lot have today, I wouldn't be studying washing greasy pots for a living. I can tell you that. If one of you page three girls can tear herself away, there's a starving fella here. All right, starving fella, what can I get you? Well, I want two fried eggs, sausage, fried potatoes and beans. I'll have a poached egg. Also. Do we do poached eggs, Gail? I dare say it's not beyond the bounds of possibility. Hey, and are you ready for this? A large glass of milk. Listen, plenty of tough guys drink it. There's no sissy about milk. Hey, I bet you they don't. Daz, I was hoping you'd come in early. Yeah, well, I've not had breakfast yet, have I? What happened after I left? How long did it go on to? So about half an hour ago. I mean, it's only just finished. A few of us stuck around all night, yeah. Flipping heck, it's a good job I didn't settle end, isn't it? Not much chance of that with your old man, was there? I'm not still mad about that, are you? At least he let me come. Let you? Women are supposed to be emancipated these days. Tell him. He'll come round. I'm training him. Did you miss me, then? What do you think? Well, they were mostly all in couples, weren't they? Not all. Did you go with anybody? It was a party. Look, knock it off, eh, Debbie? How about getting us some grub? One poached egg. Come in. Bring your nice big fryer, Pe. On me. Great. Morning. Just been over to the bank. Fred G was asking for you earlier. Oh, Fred, yeah. Where is he? Well, he went off. I told him you wouldn't be back for an hour or so. Did you have an appointment with him? Sort of, yeah. Here, yeah, Emily, what do you think of these, eh? They're very colourful. What are they for? Well, they're shirt fabrics, aren't they? Machine washable, non-iron, drip dry. Well, that looks so buried. It's only a little idea I'm working on. I wouldn't do anything without first consulting you. Oh, Fred, here. Now, you're a man of taste and discretion. Would you wear a candy pink shirt, eh? Oof, me and Ponzi pink. That's one of my ears pierced and wear a pair of Betlinch chandeliers. <laughs> And I was thinking of manufacturing them, you know, pink, uh, lemon... Oh, well, I mean, if, no, if the tailor by somebody that knows what he's doing, well, of course, that's a totally different ball game, Mr Baldwin. Glad to hear it. Right, Emily, I won't keep you. I'll be in in a minute when we go through those accounts, all right? Yes, sir. Only, uh, you did say to come over this morning, Mr Baldwin. You said you might have something for me, you know. I might indeed, yeah. Oh, salesman sort of thing. Now you've gone in the men's market, you want somebody that cuts a fashionable figure, won't you? Well, you're jumping the gun a bit there. That's not exactly what I had in mind. But you do have some Oh, yeah. I wouldn't have asked you to come across if I hadn't. I'm sorry, Mavis, but I think you're being very unreasonable. Don't you think so, Rita? Don't drag me into this. I'm not here. Just look on me as part of the fixes and fittings. You could have... 
cleared up any doubts in Victor's mind once and for all, but no, you botched it. I did not botch it. I told him in no uncertain terms that you had made your choice and that I would not have him pestering my fiancée. Why does he still insist on coming round here, then? Because the man is totally unreasonable. I must say, Mavis, I'm surprised you ever formed a relationship with such an unstable character. Oh, Victor is not unstable. He's highly artistic and, well, I mean, all creative people are inclined to be temperamental. Temperamental. I call it childish. Well, the last thing that Victor is is childish. I mean, when we went to the Lake District, he took complete charge. He knew exactly what to do. I wouldn't talk about the Lake District if I were you. I thought you weren't supposed to be here. I'm only thinking of a vicar. The vicar? Aren't you an appointment with him five minutes uh -huh. ago? Oh. What's up with your boyfriend, then? How a dad seems to have lost some of his dazzle. He's tired, that's all. He's been up all night. Now, well, he wants to keep proper hours and find himself a proper job. No wonder your dad doesn't fancy him. I don't care what my dad fancies. It's nothing to do with you either, Phyllis. It's my life, thank you very much. She'll not take any notice of anything we say, you know. She's not a bad kid. It upsets me to see her chucking herself away on a layabout like him. Well, it may not be a problem for much longer. Get away. Look at the love light in her eyes. Yes, but what about his? He does just come in. Mm. Right, what does he want? That's pie mash and peas for ice bread and butter. Well? Uh, pardon me, I am right in thinking this is a cafe, aren't I? I'm not in the mood for jokes, Dad. What do you want? Well, uh, I was uh, thinking about sausage and chips. You've not come in here for sausage and chips. All right, well, uh, I'll have the mixed grill then, if that's what you recommend. You're wasting your time, he's not here. Who is he? Daz, isn't that what you've come in for? To catch me out? Look, Debbie, I've not come in here to catch you out, as you put it. I mean, I don't like this silly war we seem to be having any more than you do. OK, I'll admit I don't much like your boyfriend. But I've told you, I don't mind you seeing him as long as you don't go on the back of that bike of his anymore. I mean, what more can I do? You went out with him last night, didn't you? Oh, yeah, great. Fat chance I've got of keeping him if I always have to rush off home after five minutes. Now, don't exaggerate. You must have been out at least three hours. And if he can't accept the fact that you've got a father who cares about you and worries about you, then he's not worth having in the first place. Who asked you to worry about me? I'm not a kid. For heaven's sake, my mum weren't much older than me when she got married to you, was she? Well, was she? Don't bring your mum into this, Debbie. Why not? Because that were different. She wouldn't have said it were different if she were here. She'd understand. She wouldn't treat me like some lousy little kid. Debbie! It's all right. It's all right. I'm going. I've done the wrong thing again, obviously. I only came in to make the peace. You've come to catch me out. Don't you think you're better talking about this at home? Home? That's not home. It's a prison. Only before you start putting any bad wire fences up, I wouldn't bother. I don't think I'll be there much longer. <laughs> How'd you bum then, Fred? Did he give you a job? Definitely, yes. So, Mike Baldwin wasn't just airing his tonsils to spite our billikins then. <laughs> uh, well, like that, me and Mike, he wouldn't mess me about, no way. And uh, what executive position has he given you then? Uh, sweeper up? Errol lad? Transport manager, as a matter of fact. I didn't know we had one of them. Well, you do now, Ivy. Uh, a pint, please, Miss Lynch, in your own. Yeah, hang on a minute. It's not that it's any of my business. Since when has that stopped, Yilda? <laughs> no, but I thought he was barred from here. Correct. Wrecked by the landlord, one William Walker of that ilk, who is currently elsewhere on an urgent business appointment. Uh, for which read having a jar with a bird. <laughs> yeah, what do you call it when somebody stands in for somebody? Uh, locum tenens. Well, hush my mouth and call me a locum, <laughs> or otherwise I'm in charge. A pint, is it, Mr. Duke? Please. I'll get them. Very kind of it. Well, we might as well start off on the right foot, mind you. I'm not going to make a habit of it. And a large scotch for me, please, but yeah, I didn't know you were uh, looking for a, a transport manager. I mean, if you put it about, I might have uh, been interested. Like, and, uh, no offence, Fred, but I've got more experience in that field, like, and you've got none, like. Transport manager? Yeah. We were, uh, we were just discussing our arrangements, Mr Baldwin. Oh, that, yeah, of course. Well, you know how it is, Jack. The uh, right man comes along at the right time and uh, bingo. <laughs> Done. Cheers. I must say, I do think you're making a fuss about nothing. I do wish you'd let it drop. Nothing? If he's asked me to marry him... Then tell him he's being ridiculous. Well, you were supposed to have done that. He insists on hearing it from you. What more could I have done? 
Well, obviously, you weren't forceful enough. Whereas I suppose he was very forceful, especially when you were camping in the Lake District. Oh. Sorry about that. Oh, she's uh, having problems with her eldest girl. Ah, poor woman. Uh, well, now, as I'm a relatively new boy here, and uh, Mr. Wilton isn't a member of this parish. Uh, no, no, I, actually, I, I live in um, Bramall. But um, uh, Miss Riley, uh, Mavis, my fiance. Yes, well, I have lived locally for quite a good few years now. In fact, I'm almost a native, you might say. Uh, quite. quite. Uh, what I meant is, as we haven't had a chance to get to know each other. Uh, no, well, I, I'm not what you might call a, a regular churchgoer, but I mean, uh, I do attend, though not quite so often since you've been here, Rick. Uh, Oh, I mean, that's no reflection on you. It's just that, well, since Rita, that's Mrs. Fairclough, the lady I work for, but she's also a very good friend as well. Well, since her husband was tragically killed in, in an accident, she has tended to lean on me rather. But not that I mind. Uh, Mavis, I, I, I do have to get back to work. That's what I'm only trying to explain to the Reverend Unsworth. It's perfectly all right. I quite understand. It's just that I feel that a marriage gets off to an even better start if the person who is solemnising the event has at least some previous acquaintance with the bride and groom. <laughs> Otherwise, the whole thing becomes totally impersonal. Yes, well, that's why we didn't want to register office. Well, precisely. And, of course, this is one of the reasons we're having this little chat today. I understand this is a first marriage for both of you. Oh, yes, but, but we have known one another quite a long time. Oh, yes, yes, our relationship has been going on for some years. But, uh, but by relationship, Derek... Uh, Mr. Um, my fiance means that, uh, well, we've been very good friends. I mean, we haven't been. Well, I, I mean, I, I know it's fashionable these days to. But, but we're not, are we, Derek? Oh, no. Definitely not. <laughs> Entirely your own business, I assure you. What we're here for today is to discuss the future, not the past. So many people rush headlong into marriage before they've given themselves time to think, to live, to mature. But I must admit that meeting you both today, I have none of the reservations I frequently feel when confronted with a, a teenage bride and groom. You've obviously both been wise enough to wait to get to know yourselves and each other, to make absolutely sure that each of you has chosen the right partner. Um, Transport manager, me I. You'd have took him on as a flipping van driver. Well, it can't be worse than that lad we had. He were flaming useless. And anyway, if it makes Fred happy, what's in a name? Quite right, nothing. Though if someone was to offer to change mine to the Duchess of Weatherfield, I'd give it a passing thought. Uh, is there a Duke of Weatherfield? Well, if there is, he's probably 80 or dev as a person or a tooth in his head. <laughs> Sounds like just your type, oh. best. So long as he makes me a rich widow, anybody's my tight cock. Yeah. Hey, up, speaking of horror stories, have a good business meeting, did we? What's he doing here? I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's called playing darts. But then again, he could have a personal vendetta against blue bottles. Hey, you. G. Are you talking to me? Unless there's somebody else of that name around here. I thought I barred you once. How many more times do you want to tell him? Out. Hey, Alan, well, just a the... minute. Uh, word in your ear, landlord. I've got some unfinished business to attend to first. Yeah, but you'll be wise to listen to me before you start your strong arm stuff. Mr. G over there happens to be an employee of mine. All oh, right, since when? Since this morning, if it's any business of yours. If any employer of mine is banned from this place without good cause, nicely inform the rest of my employees that the said establishment is out of bounds forthwith. Get it? Out of bounds? You're running a little tin pot factory, not a flaming army camp, chum. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I can't get them to do anything they don't want to do, but uh, you do your sums, chum. You work out how much a week my girls spend in this place, not including yours truly. Then you make up your mind whether you're prepared to take the gamble of them taking any notice of any restriction. I mean, please yourself, but... Uh, well, in my experience, they've been a pretty loyal mob. What's that expression? Divided with four. All right, G. In the interest of public harmony, you can stay. But any more funny business and you don't get a second chance, is that clear? Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether I fancy being in a place uh, under sufferance like. Cool it, Fred. <laughs> I'll go on back then for your sake. And I know there's a lot of muckers of mine don't want to see the back of me, mind you. Dale's not a patch on what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I expect she's told you what's happened. Some of it, yes. She's making a dreadful mistake, Rita. He's, he's not the man for her. She's a big girl now, Victor. Perhaps it's up to her to decide. But I don't think she has decided. I mean, that's the whole point. I think he's brainwashed her into submission. 
Somehow, I don't think that's Derek's style. Oh, just because the man's dull and boring doesn't mean to say he can't be persuasive. He is a salesman, after all. Oh, no, I mean, he's fed her all the old arguments. Church wedding, security, an index-linked future. Things that Mavis has been conditioned to expect all her life. So she's fallen for his cosy little trap. That's not what she really wants at all. She seems to think it is. Well, then she's wrong, and I've got to convince her that she's wrong. I've got a moral duty to save her from herself. Mavis is cut out for finer things than grilling his chops every night. Grilling your chops every night? And in her heart, she knows it, and that's why she's wavering. And that's why I need to talk to her before it's too late. When do you expect her back? Well, not till early evening. Her and Derek have gone to see the vicar. Then they're going to the hotel to finalise the arrangements for the reception. Then they're going to the travel agents to book a honeymoon. So I wouldn't count on a wavering too much. Sometimes it's as well to take no for an answer and turn your sights on somebody else. There isn't anybody else. You'll have to start looking. No, nil desperandum Pendlebury. Onward and upward, per ardua ad astra. I'll tell you something, Rita. I've never been a quitter. No, I can see that. I'll tell her you called. I can't stand here chatting to you. I've been telling her off all day for doing that. Ah, that's why she looks so miserable. Not entirely, no. She's had a barney with her dad and Kevin over her lad. You know what young love is. Me? I can't remember that far back. Daz, am I that glad to see you? I've had an horrible day. Sorry to hear that. It's OK now you're here, though. Listen, I'll knock off in about ten minutes. What can I get you? Er, uh, I don't know. What do you fancy? Whatever you're having, Daz. Weren't you at the party last night? Yeah. I thought you were supposed to call me Gary Bowker. Oh, he's dead boring. All he ever wants to talk about is Duran Duran and his next haircut. You swanned off early, so me and Denise got dancing. Well, I'm here now. What are we doing tonight? Sorry, not tonight. Tell her, Daz. You're not scared of her, are you? He's taking me to pictures. There's a double R on at Studio Two. Oh, no, he's not. I'm his girlfriend, not you. Look, nobody's me flipping girlfriend. I play the field, right? Look, Deb, we had some fun. A few laughs. But leave it at that, eh? A few laughs? Is that it? I thought this was important to you. You said... You told me I was special. Yeah, well, that was before. Before what? Nothing's changed. I still love you, Daz. I don't want that stuff. Don't crowd me, Debbie, eh? What were you and your old man? I mean, who needs that kind of hassle? Just leave it, eh, hey, kid? No hard feelings. Daz, are we going to get somewhere to eat or what? I mean, if you're just coming here tonight... Yeah, right. Fetch us a couple of plates of egg and chips, eh, Deb? Come on, Daz. I'd sooner have hamburger anyway. Yeah. All happens here, doesn't it? She's talking through that. By tomorrow, she'll have forgot all about it. I don't know. I just don't seem to be able to get through to her anymore. Nobody can when she's that way out. You know what the trouble is, don't you? When a girl's her age, she needs a mother. Be no different. She still go fancying all the wrong lads. Yeah, but a mother could talk to her, couldn't she? You know the way women do. I'm no use to her in that respect. Debbie. That's it, isn't it? You've had your rotten way and I hope you're flipping happy. Hey, knock it off, Deb. What's happened? It's chopped me, auntie. Daz. And it's all his rotten fault. Look, Debbie. I didn't mean to make you unhappy. I was only trying to do what I thought was best for you. Well, for someone who didn't want to make me unhappy, he did a smashing job. Oh, Dad. <laughs> He's got another girlfriend and he don't want to see me ever again. <laughs> I wish I were dead. No, you don't. You don't talk such <laughs> rubbish. You'll be all right, you'll see. Your old dad's promised. And when's he ever let you down, eh? I'm, I'm sorry we left you on your own all afternoon, Rita. Well, there was just so much to do. Did you manage you all right? No problems? Nothing I couldn't handle. Oh, Rita, I'm neglecting my manners. What will you have to drink? Oh, that's very kind of you. I'll have a vodka and tonic, please. Oh, uh, no. 
No, somebody else then. Maybe. I'll have a word with you, please. Look, Victor, anything you have to say to me, it will say in front of my fiance. Derek? Yes, right. In the snug. Well, I hope Mrs. Walker's got a fallout shelter. I think we're going to need one. <clears throat> Look, Victor, I know what you've come for, but, well, the answer's still no. I'm very flattered that you've asked me to marry you, but, well, you had your chance a long time ago and you didn't take it. So I've nothing to add to what Derek's already said. So be a good chap and uh, take your defeat like a man, eh? My defeat? Oh, no, I'm not the loser here. You are, Mavis. You are about to make the biggest mistake of your life. And in years to come, when you're bored and miserable and artistically stifled by this, this salesperson here, I hope you'll remember that you had at least one true friend who tried to save you from your self-inflicted fate. Don't worry. I shan't bother you again. In fact, I shall wish you the very best of luck. Because, by God, you're going to need it. Right, so it's uh, living assistant for busy news agent, unsocial hours, but living accommodation provided. First class living accommodation. I mean, it's only five minutes since I had it all redecorated. Right. And uh, do you want me to mention a date? Well, the wedding's set for next week. Well, I could say uh, immediate vacancy for living assistant. Yeah, that sounds all right. right. You've uh, contacted the job centre, I take it? Yeah, phoned them yesterday. Well, a job and a flat. I should imagine it'll be quite a cute. Doubt if I'll find another Mavis, though. To be honest, I shall feel like Laurel without Hardy. And what I shall do for a laugh, I don't know. Not left already, has she? Not officially, no, as you might say. But to tell you the God's honest truth, she's been neither use nor ornament for these past few weeks. Her life's been in a turmoil. Uh, with the proposal? With the two proposals. Oh, don't tell me Percy finally got round to popping the question. No, seriously, Ken. I mean, she's had her old flame back, Victor, on his knees, down from the hills like a man gone berserk. Oh? Mm. At one stage, I thought it was going to be a touch of the pistols at dawn. Passions were running deep, then. Mm. And now, having sorted all that out, made a choice, sent Victor packing, booked the church, sent out the invites, been sermonised by the vicar, guess what she's just realised? I give in. She has no one to give her away. Oh, Emily. If anyone wants me, I'm at Predis. Suddenly, they're not selling jeans anymore. All right, Mr. Baldwin. Leave it with me. <laughs> oh. oh. What's the game, love? I beg your pardon? I said, what's the game? Are you collecting car numbers or something? Oh, uh, no. Uh, uh, well, that is uh, not exactly. Well, you could have kidded me. I mean, you were writing it down. You don't want me name and address like, do you? Or me collar size? I was simply taking precautions. Precautions? I'd say you were taking liberties. We just happened to be operating a home watch scheme in this area. Oh, goody for you. But where do I come in? Well, you have been parked here well over an hour. I'm waiting for the wife. She's at the Chiropodists, round the corner, having her corns done. Anything else you want to know? No, thanks. Right, what do you fancy? Oh, no, no, this is my treat. Oh. The kind of what? Bitter. 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 I certainly got your money's worth out of me this morning. Well, I never said it was a cushy number, did I? Don't get me wrong, I'm not moaning. You make the jeans, I'll deliver them. It's better than serving me on this monkey bar, I can tell you. Hey, come on, service, chop, chop. Pipe for me, the menu, whatever Mike's having. 
No, thanks. Leave me up. I've got things to do, people to see. OK, mate. But listen, G, don't push your luck. Just up your ale and keep that shot. Know what I mean? Oh, drop dead, Walker. Oh, <laughs> make no mistake, sunshine. You are skating on very thin ice. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you think you've got back in. You think you've made a good move. No danger. But you are just a poor. Our lad here is not employing you because he thinks you're a grafter. He's employing you because he thinks it annoys me. Baloney. Am I right or am I right? I think you're overestimating your importance in the scheme of things. See Ivy when you get back. She'll sort you out. Right on, Mr Baldwin. Creeping will get you everywhere. The upshot being that I haven't really got anybody in my family to... <laughs> well, let's face it, I haven't really got any family who's worth speaking of. Oh, not that I'm a foundling or anything, but... Well, I, I'm short of... Well, an, an uncle or somebody of that standing to give me away. And, I mean, I, I couldn't face it if I had to make do with Derek's area manager. Well, if you've got me in your sights, love, there's one thing I must make very clear. That's on the subject of a speech. Oh, believe me, Alf, there's absolutely no need to make a speech. Hey, hang on a minute. I shan't do it if I can't make a speech. Oh, <laughs> the making of speeches is entirely optional, and I'm sure you'd make a very fine speech. Mavis, love, of course I'll stand for you. I should be oh, honest. thank goodness. As a matter of fact, you drop lucky, you know, because I happen to be an expert at giving away. I, uh, I give Durdry away. Oh, yes, so you do. I'm going to have to start charging, you know. A pound an hour and a big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my friend. My friend. Uh, half a bit of please. Uh, that's his Sally, is it? Oh, she's in the snog interview in the Home Watch Brigade. Hey, gorgeous. Your boss is on your trail. Where does she get them skirts? It's no good having the skirts unless you've got the pins to go with them, my sweet. Hello, hello. Subject normal. Is she uh, caught in, is she? Hardly my business. If only it were mine. Be a dad's business, wouldn't it? So you'd about qualify. Yeah, you know, underneath all that makeup petal, you're very suburb. I was fetched up, chap. This age difference thing is all for the birds. If I had grey hair and a white stick, I could still pull that little number. Boasting again? Yeah. So well, actually, I was chatting her up this morning. I could see all the signs. Bet you. How much? You pull her out of the glasses. I'll be round in a sec. I'm just refereeing this, OK? Look, uh, it's my night off tonight. Oh. And I was wondering if you're not booked up, if you fancy a little trot out on the town. Or a little candlelit dinner, that sort of thing, edged together. Uh, I mean, does that uh, grab you in any way at all? Sure. I'd love it. Whoop. Come in. Oh. Thank goodness that's over. It was quite painless, really. Alf was ever so... Oh, well, what do you call it? Obliging? Well, not obliging, exactly. It was just, well, what you might say, understanding. And, I mean, I know it's an old-fashioned word, but it was very gentlemanly and, and reassuring. Well, you might even supply you with some cheap plant play cards, right? Right. What a remark to me. Oh, relax. I'm only joking. Well, I can't relax. Why not? you got it all cracked now, haven't you? All you have to do is lie back and enjoy it. Oh, Rita, will you go for your lunch before I lose patience? Right, I will. It won't be long. And book up. Yes, can I help you? Yeah, I've come from Job Centre. The name's Wilkins, Sonia Wilkins. Yes, for... You lost or something? No, well, when I say I've come, I suppose I mean I've been sent by a job centre to apply for a position. As soon as they told me, I shot off. I mean, it seems too good to be true, doesn't it? I mean, somebody these days giving up a job and a flat. I heard they were getting married. It must be Omar Sharif, at least. <laughs>
what you're playing at. Oi! Oi! Stop! Here, what's all this shouting about? There was a woman in the ginnel. Listen, Gomes, when you see a woman, you whistle. You act subtle, do you know what I mean? No need to start shouting. I nearly strained myself there. I was in the middle of a bench press. Yeah, but she was in Deirdre Barlow's yard, nicking stuff off the line. Look, look, she's dropped some. Hey, you're only right. You've only prevented a crime. <laughs> this could be promotion for you, sonny boy. You might be getting an armband after all. Do you reckon? Oh, yes. And what's all this, then? Deirdre Barlow's washing. Well, I can see that. I suppose you're collecting it for a jumble sale, are you? No, no, we were saving it from getting pinched from the line. Oh, by heck, you young lads. It's all them mucky magazines and videos. No, no, you don't understand, Mrs. O. It's no it? use, Krill. You might as well admit it. It's this fetish she's got, you see, Mrs. O. This compulsion to dress up like a woman. You might not believe this, but Curly leads a double life. The bins by day, yeah, but at night, Curly's a bunny girl. So you mind telling me what's going on here? A woman was nicking your undies. I don't believe it. It's dead right. Oh, God, blow me. Mind you, she knew a bit of class when she saw it. Hey, I like them vests. Where does your Ken get them from? Ah, oh, gum, it's a good job I was doing my step. If she'd seen my Stan's vest, she'd have been in there like a whippet. I get them off the market, you know. Oh, there's real wear in them. I mean, I know this home watch scheme is basically a good idea, but you are treading a fairly thin line between acceptable vigilance and, I suppose, unacceptable prying. So it's very easy to offend innocent people and end up getting a flea in your ear. Yeah. Some folk, you've only to look at them wrong. <laughs> so I don't think I'll be taking any more car numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could have been a tale. He could have been up to something. All that about waiting for his wife. Mm. Could have been. Mm. Speaking of wives, I bumped into Mavis this morning oh. on the way to see Alf. Was it mission successful? Oh, everything's going according to plan. Mind you, she did have a bit of a setback at dinner. Oh. Well, I've had to advertise this job. I'm running a business. Anyway, an applicant called while I was out, and I think it gave her a bit of a jolt. Oh, hello, Emily. I'm just popping out to post this letter. Well, I'll be passing the post office. Oh, right, then, well, if you oh, could, thank you. It's, uh, it's a bit, uh, as a matter of fact. Not change your mind, have you? Of course not. I just thought I ought to put what has been said into writing and sort of underline the fact that it's all over between us and that he mustn't feel any bitterness. But, I mean, I've, I've tried to express it all poetically because, well, we do have this kind of poetic rapport. Oh, oh. Mavis, forgive us, we're late. Hello. Hello. Hi, folks. <laughs> I don't think you know Mrs. Bishop, do you? This is Edith, Derek's sister. Oh, uh, pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, my dear. We'll be seeing you at the wedding, I suppose. Naturally. <laughs> well, as far as I can tell, the show's pretty well on the road. It should be a good do, as long as this chap, Victor, doesn't turn up at the church or anything. Oh, I'm sure he won't. I mean, I know Derek's told him to go and boil his head and so on, but you never know with these passionate types. Oh, told him to go and boil his head, did he? Uh, well, I, I think that was roughly the message. Well, uh, I'll uh, say goodbye then. I've got a letter to post. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, Bye. 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 Thank you, Em. Well, I'll just be a minute, but if I go upstairs, there's a pot of tea and some cakes ready. Tea and cakes? Yeah. Oh, come on. I I'll only be a tick. It's only a tick, mind. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, goodness, I've never known things happen so fast. Well, about time, isn't it? Do you know, I was reckoning up last night. It's just 11 years since you first walked through that door. Somehow, the next 11 aren't going to be quite the same. Did you want something? Or are you just giving your eyes a treat? Oh, sorry. The thing is, I don't like interrupting love affairs. <laughs> OK, so you're very smart with the funnies. Now, what is it? You date, see, a poor kid. Sally? But I'm supposed to be picking her up. Oh, come on. She won't want her mum going into shock or summer. She doesn't live with her mum. You know, I've been saying to myself all afternoon while I've been slaving over them glasses, I've been saying, must be his aftershave or summer. And here I am clocking you, and you've got a beard. Not blue, but still it is a beard. Well, give the lady a large vodka and tell her I'll be out in a tick, all right? She already has a large vodka. Oh. She must be getting nervous. Mike Baldwin bought it for her. Oh. It's 
So Baldwin's chatting my bird up, is he? He is that. And I must say, it's great to see a pro at work. Well, in that case, you tell Sally I'm still in the bath and I can't find me aftershave. Now, come on, straight up. You must have some money behind you. I mean, you could have a bit of the old moolash stashed away somewhere. Why must I have money? Well, why else would Walker be interested in it? Here is where is he a fortune hunter, money? Look, let me warn you. Don't leave him alone with your handbag. He'll be checking up on your bank book. Well, I've always wanted to get in the clutches of an unscrupulous cab, haven't I? Oh, well. If that's what turns you on, I'm sure it can be arranged. Here, yeah. did you hear about Fred? Ran amok in a factory, has he? Crawling around the machine room floor, you heard, weighing all the legs up. You reckon he dropped half a pee? <laughs> Better than that. My mum reckons that for a joke, he said, let's initiate him. Aye, bucket of steam touch. Well, they're going to saw his pockets up, weren't they? Yeah, and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Any road, mum reckons that he knocked him that sick that they had to leave him alone. My mum says he's just lying there on the floor, saying, come on, girls, initiate me, initiate me. <laughs> he's puddled. Tell you what I might do in the very near future. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a tinkle, see if we can fix something up. So, what are you doing here? I said I was going to pick you up. Well, I was working late and we're only just around the corner. If you think I should dress up. Oh, no, that will be gilding the lily. You look a million dollars to me. Well, you don't look so bad yourself. All right, let's get mobile. Where the champagne is on ice. Sure. Thank you for the drink. Hello. Hello there. Well, that was a right wild goose chase, wasn't it? But that's not the right attitude at all. This fellow was lurking round your garage. He could have been after your vehicle. Well, couldn't you just have told him to push off instead of getting me out at this time? Look, I followed him to the flying horse. If anything had been missing from your vehicle, we could have gone in there and nabbed him. It wasn't that fellow with the scar, was it, that you said had done the rovers? Now, look, I followed the correct procedure. All you had to do, Percy, was shine that torch of yours through the garage window and you would have seen that my car was intact. How would I know where the brakes had been tampered with? You might be the victim of a political vendetta. Oh, aye, somebody who can't get on the housing list. The only way to check was to get the key holder. Key holder? Are you accusing me now? Or do you mean key holder? Quite frankly, Councillor, I don't think there's any need for this sarcasm. Oh, for Pete's sake, Percy, all you had to do was shine your torch on the lock. That wasn't possible. Why not? My batteries have run out. Well, I'm not surprised. I suppose we should give thanks you're not using a blooming searchlight. Uh, I couldn't help seeing your door open. Are you serving? No, I'm not. Ah. Only I've done some chips, you see, and I've run out of tomato oh, sauce. all right. Keeping your eyes skinned, I suppose, Mr. Sugden. I like your torch. How much are they? Oh, Councillor, it's you, this, Mrs. Ogden. Oh. Oh, thanks very much, Charles. Put it on my bill, would you? Good night. Good night. Can I go back to my supper now? Well, there is just one other little thing. Now, listen, Percy. If you're going to tell me that letting Hilda Ogden have that bottle of sauce was contravening the bylaws, I shall get very nasty. And I wouldn't blame you either, Councillor. No, I was just wondering if you could uh, let me have some batteries. I should think of making tracks. I suppose so. I don't fancy the journey. Still. Won't take ten minutes, will it? Or maybe a bit more. But the journey's nothing. It's going home to an empty house. When we're sort of... so cosy here. Just a few more days. Yes, I realise that. Even so. I don't suppose I could stay the night. We did agree not to. I'd sleep on the couch. That's just what people might say, isn't it? Well, who's going to know? 
Oh, it's surprising how these things get out. I mean, well, as Percy's sucked in at the centre, I mean, he's forever prowling about on patrol or something. What, at this time? And then Rita does tend to get in pretty early. It's not just that, though, is it? I mean, it just seems a shame to sort of tarnish things just when we're so close to having it all, well, kind of sanctified. That's beautifully put. Huh. You should have been a poet. Well, a poetess, maybe. No, I'm being silly. The car almost drives itself anyway. I'll be fine. No, don't see me out. Just sit here with the music and think of us. Bye. Till tomorrow. Bye. Nonsense from the waiters? No, we had no nonsense. Were we embarrassed by the wine list and all that? How was your father? No, we weren't embarrassed. And when the band played the tango? Your expertise was dazzling. Thank you. Thank you. That's because I've served me time, you see. I've got me city and guilds as a gigolo. It's what they call night school. I went there to learn welding and came out yes. a fully-fledged booze artist and general man of the world. Sounds to me like you're quite hard-boiled. Is that how you like your eggs in the morning? You don't miss a trick, do you? That's because I don't reckon this. Me walking your own business. And we could go out onto them streets and get arrested. Yeah, but you see, I've got to go to work tomorrow. And if I'm late, then I'll have Ken on to me. I should be very careful how you say things like that. Could get twisted. But, you know, you know what I mean. I know it's gone to in the morning. Well, the other three. I know we've got this place to ourselves. We have. We have. Well, you didn't tell me. Didn't I? No. Oh. And what was it you were saying when you were getting all fiery and passionate about Greenpeace and all that stuff? <sighs> you said you hated waste. Did I? Hmm. Domestic labour force. One of your permanent working class, the affluent society left behind. Underpaid, underprivileged. Good morning, Mrs. Ogden. Morning. I think I've just thrown Mrs. Ogden a wobbler. Pardon? Giving her a turn. Struck her all of a heap. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, it doesn't take much to make Hilda's jaw drop. No. Tough. You're not bothered, are you, that she saw me? Are you? Yeah, not a jot. I couldn't care less either. Good. What's for breakfast? There's fruit juice, cornflakes, toast. Mm. But I could murder some bacon, couldn't you? Yes, please. I'm famished. I quite like you, you know. I should hope so. just seen in our street. A little baby rabbit. Oh, that's a little rabbit living round here. They come from where that mill was pulled down, you know, near the canal. It's all overgrown now. I've seen them. From Dark Satanic Mill to Rabbit Warren. Is that a good swap? Anyway, it sure beats seeing an empty beer can rolling down the street when you come out at the house first thing in the morning feeling half-baked and bloody-minded. You're still brooding, aren't you? Yes. Maybe if you can't have your cake and eat it. I mean, your life's going to change, and one of the changes is that you won't be working here anymore. 
first I've got to find someone to fill your place. I know you have. You think I should have waited till he actually toddled off, don't you? And then supposing it'd take me weeks to find somebody, I'd be worn to a frazzle. Oh, I know, it's just the thought of somebody taking over from me here. I mean, I've worked here a long time, Rita, and I've enjoyed working here. Well, most of the time. Thanks very much. And leaving, well, it just brings home to me what a big step I'm taking. Yes, it is a big step. Marriage is, I mean, a gigantic step. But it's also a very wonderful and exciting step. Oh, I just wish it could have happened a bit slower. Slower? It's taken you 40 odd years to get to this stage. Oh, I know it has, hasn't it? Well then, enjoy every minute of it. Oh. All right? Yes. Yes. Oh, hello, hello, you two. Uh, hello. Pre wedding nerves. To invite you out to lunch, maybe. Lunch? You do eat, don't you? Yes, but we don't have very long for lunch. Well, I'm not taking you to the Midland. Where do you usually go? Well, Rover's Return. Well, that doesn't sound like a big posh hotel either. It isn't. Grotty little pub. Great. I shall feel at home there. I'll pick you up at half past twelve, Mavis. We'll have a good chat. And if there are any problems I can help with, don't hesitate. Must fly. Cheerio. Try, love. There you are. She'll cheer you up. She could cheer a slip disc up, could Edith. I don't want cheering up, Rita. I just want to be left alone to get on with it. It's disgusting what goes on. Disgusting. Go on then, Percy. Disgust don't us. encourage him, Deirdre. I'm surprised at you, Councillor. A man in your position, a public figure, scoffing at a man doing a public duty. I'm not scoffing at you, Percy. Look. Wait till I catch somebody else trying to break into these premises. You'll change your tune, then. Yes, Percy. It's no joke, you know, roaming them streets at night in all sorts of weather. It's no joke at all. And some of the things I see... What do you see, Percy? Courting couples. Been to Guinness for miles round here. Don't seem to have a pair. And I'll tell you something else. It's not what I used to understand by courting. Not at all. <laughs> hey, you're not one of these courting couples that's been obsessing poor old Percy, are you, Curly? No, I'm not. Worse luck. <laughs> hey, he's going to get a thick ear of somebody as Percy, snooping around the dark. Yes, Curly. I have paid you this week, haven't I, Hilda? Yes, you have. Oh, it's just that with you keep glaring at me like I thought I forgot. Who says I'm glaring at you? I do. I'll look somewhere else then. You know, Elder, with you having spent most of your life around here, I find it really surprising that you should be shocked by... Well, we both know what you're glaring at me for, don't we? Oh, do me a favour. Very little shocks me these days. You've only got to read the paper to see that the Ten Commandments are just a joke now. I mean, there's even some folk have the cheek to do something wrong and then blame it on the government. No, it's not that, Billy. What is it, then? Well, it's just that you you treat it so casual. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. I can't get used to that. Yes, well, it's not your problem, is it, Hilda? So don't worry about it, eh? Morning, Hilda Cock. Morning. Oh, dear. Going to be one of them days, is it? No, I'll tell you what it is, should I bet. Can I stop you? I've missed out all down the rotten line. Nothing's ever touched me. Not your affluent society or your permissive society. I've never even had my hair tinted. I might as well have been dead these past 50 years. Elder. What? Shall I tell you what I do when I'm feeling like you do? I go out and I buy myself a new frock. And if you've not got the brass, I'll lend it to you. Oh, well, I think I could manage 10 quid. There you are, then. Oh, are you? By the way, Billy had a guest last night. Sally Waterman. Yeah? Silly girl. Well, at least she knows what a forbidden fruit is. I'm sorry I wasn't in when you called yesterday. To be honest, I didn't expect a response to me advert that quick. Oh, around here like a shot. Well, I mean, a job and a flat to go with it, it sounded unbelievable. Oh, well, it's true right enough. I just can't imagine who'd want to give up a job like that these days. Well, it's uh, Mavis here. She's, she's leaving to get married. Oh, I see. Congratulations. Thank you. You're not married, I take it. Uh, yeah, I am. Oh. 
Oh, well, in that case... Well, it lasts at six months. It's gone back to Egypt now, thank God. Oh. Well, there are snags to this job, you know. You pay a wage, don't you? Union rate. Well, at first. There aren't any snags, then. Well, you'd have to do the early turn. That means a six o'clock start every other week. I'm an early riser. And we don't close till seven at night. I've hardly any social life. Have you any experience of working in a shop? Well, before my mistake, I worked in Wilson's. You know, the jewellers in the precinct. Oh. I've got a reference. Ta. Oh, well, they certainly haven't been stingy in their praise. You haven't written it, have you? Who oh, you guessed. <laughs> No, I didn't. I was very happy there, actually, until the day he walked in. My husband, I mean. He comes in to buy himself a gold chain, finishes up by me a ring. Oh, well, <laughs> we don't get many like that coming in here, so you should be safe. Well, that's good news. Can I have the job, then? Well, I don't see why not. Thanks. Um, could I look at the flat? Do you think you could show her the flat, Mavis? Oh, I would like to come this way, please. It's through there. I just think that doing an article about Percy Sugden and his doll patrol will only make him worse. Night patrol, Alf. He goes out at night. Sorry. I mean, he could get himself in all sorts of lumber, you know. He could get the vicar arrested. Why? What's the vicar been up to? Nothing. I'm just using him as an example of the sort of trouble that Percy could cause. Oh. I mean, seeing his name in the paper will only make him worse. He'll be even more puffed up and self-important. Let's face it, he's not one of your average citizens in Percy, is he? He's still fighting Hitler, for one thing. All right, all right. I'll tell Sally to play it down a little, but that's the best I can do. You ready? Uh, no, I'm just standing here modelling this two-year-old coat, actually. <laughs> Come on. I'm surprised she's got time to do any reporting, that assistant of yours, Ken. Van Hilda? Well, I thought she might be writing her memories. You know, like uh, my lightning love affair with Billy Walker. What are you talking about? Only that she spent last night at the Rovers. Rubbish, Hilda. Ask her. Ask him. Oh, they won't deny it. Talk about shameless. Well, I... Uh... I suppose they're both old enough. You come in, Ken. Ken? <clears throat> Could I have uh, a tin of rice pudding and a tin of prunes, please? <clears throat> Seemed flabbergasted, Ken, didn't he, when I told him about Sally Watts, her name, and Billy Walker? Still, I suppose in his mind, not being over fond of Billy, it'll be a case of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> Two bottles of lager, please. Right, sir. We have two salad sandwiches as well, please. On brown, naturally. Naturally. I've actually got some nice beef in, if you're interested. <laughs> we prefer salad. You're the customer, sir. There you go. That's exactly right. Sit down. Yeah, if you like. Oh, your Italian meals. About wafer thin. Are you sure there's anything in between? I didn't know you wanted door stops. I thought I was dealing with ladies. Do I look like a lady? No, love. Now give us a shout if you want some more. Just the type you want in a pub, isn't she? Yes, she is rather suited. Uh, Not bad. Mmm, quite nice. So, just a week to go, Mavis. Yes, that's right. You married, are you, Emily? I'm a widow, actually. Oh. Emily's been married twice. <laughs> well, twice, eh? Oh, you should be able to give Mavis plenty of advice. Oh, I don't think you need any, do you, Mavis? <laughs> I can advise her about Derek. You've got to keep him moving, Mavis. He's like a donkey. He needs prodding or he'll take roots. <laughs> After I remember that. <laughs> anyway, we're not here to discuss Derek, are we? He's not important. <laughs> Is there anything you want? Anything you've not done, what needs doing? I'm sure, like me, Emily would be only too glad to help. Absolutely. Well, I, I can't think that there is anything, really. I mean, it all seems to be going like clockwork. And what about your hen party? Have you organised oh, that? I don't want a hen party. Of course you do. Daddy could be having a bachelor, do. Why should the fellas have all the fun? Well, I, I don't really like parties. Oh, rubbish. Leave it to me. I'll organise it. And have a few drinks, a good nasher. You can get all nostalgic about your salad days and we'll send you to the scaffold smiling. Eh, hey, Emily? Yes. I tell you, Percy's going round getting an eyeful of anyone he finds, you know, courting. They'd better not shine his torch on me. 
Why, who are you going out with? I thought you finished with Jill. No, oh, I haven't. But that doesn't stop me going out with Bev Marshall now, does it? Beverly Marshall! Shut up. Well, she only goes out with people with fast cars and money. That's what she told me anyway. Don't believe everything you hear. You know, I've just had a thought. Percy's a bit like a peeping Tom, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I suppose he is. And that's against the law, that, isn't it? Isn't it? You wouldn't. <laughs> wouldn't I? You think of anybody else to invite? You don't have many friends, do you, maybe? Well, it's better to keep it to a few close friends or it just becomes a bun fight. Oh, yes, but we want to enjoy ourselves, don't we? Especially, maybe, on the last night of freedom, eh, maybe? Look, I, I ought to be getting back because Rachel will want to go for a lunch. Not time for just one more? No, really, I haven't. Oh, well, we'll make up for it at your hen party. Not to mention the wedding. <laughs> Oh, hi. I'm glad I managed to find you because Councillor Watson's let us down. He's just gone off to a meeting. So there's no interview and there's a big hole in the paper. Well, not meeting forever, surely. Well, it could be midnight before he's back, according to his wife. Meetings in Manchester. I suppose we could use that Percy Second Home Watch story instead. No, I want to talk to you about that. I'll think of something. <clears throat> Well, just thought I'd let you know. Excuse me. Well, at least she's not lost interest in her work. No. Come on, admit it. You couldn't keep away, could you? No, I had to see my boss about something. Talk about the big head. <laughs> Talking about your boss. He can hardly keep his eyes off us. Well, I suppose he's wondering what's a nice girl like me doing in a place like this, talking to you. Very likely. What do you want to drink? A glass of dry wet wine, please. I don't suppose there's any chance of you hanging around till we've closed, is it? No. Pitten. A fantastic figure, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose, yes. Here. Here. Those two are getting very cosy all of a sudden, aren't they? Oh, they can't bear to be parted. Well, not last night, anyway. Really? Really. I wish you'd stop staring, Ken. Sorry. I'm sorry I'm late, Rita, but you know what Edith's like. She goes on and on. She only insists now that I have to have a hem party. She thinks it'll be a jolly evening, but I mean, it'll all turn maudlin in the end. They always do. Derek's upstairs. Well, what does he want? I don't know. He just said he wanted to see you. Well, don't you want to go for your lunch? Well, I can hang on a bit longer. Oh, if it's anything to do with this wedding, I'll... Oh, well, I will. You could always nip off to Greta Green. Save yourself a lot of hassle. Hello, Derek. I didn't expect to see you today. No, I was passing. And... Oh. <laughs> I didn't know you went in for posh magazines. Oh, yes, I read them all. Well, I mean, they're already on the premises, aren't they? And just a bit of escapism. Yeah, we all need some of that, don't we? Escapism. Yes. How are you? How am I? I'm fine. Good. Why? Well, it's a funny old time, isn't it? Wedding coming up. Oh. Lots of things to think about. Rushed off your feet. It's a tense time, Mavis. Are you feeling tense? Well, no, not tense exactly. More keyed up, you know? Like a sprinter waiting for the gun. The gun? Yes. Actually, I am feeling tense. Do you know what I've had to do today, Derek? I've had to show the girl that's taking over from me round here, round my flat, already. Have you? And then I've got landed with a hen party I didn't want. Well, how did that happen? Oh, Edith decided to organise me, didn't she? I mean, I was hardly consulted. Oh, dear. She can be a bit bossy, can Edith? Do you know, on bonfire nights, she would never, ever let me hold my own sparklers? I never forgave her for that. I just feel that I've become an event. I mean, the wedding, that's the important thing. That's what everybody's interested in. I just don't seem to matter. You'll be all right after it's all over, Mavis. Do you think so? Of course you will. It's a stressful situation for both of us, isn't it? Well, I thought you weren't feeling any stress. Well, just a little. I'm more tired than anything. I know what you mean. Oh. 
I know I'm being silly, but it's, it's just all this business of, of the flat and then Edith. I mean, I just feel that everything's been taken control of. I mean, well, not that I was ever in control of anything very much. But I just get swept along by events. Mavis. Now, give me a hug. Now, repeat after me. Everything's going to be hunky-dory. Everything's going to be hunky-dory. Yeah. Doesn't that feel better? Yeah. Sorry. I got carried away. Hey, you've got no lights on that bike. Oh, Evening, no ladies. Everything all right? Yes. You haven't seen anything or anybody suspicious, have you? Well, there was this fella down the back wearing a black mask, a striped pullover, and carrying a big sack on his back. But when I asked him, he said he was a postman, so, uh, you know... What I'm doing is not funny, Sonny. It's deadly serious. Crime can destroy civilization as we know it if we're not careful. The price of liberty is eternal vigilance now. You remember that? Yes, Mr. Subden. Are these lights on your bike in working order, Norman? Perfect, Mr. Subden. I'm glad to see that. Made everything secure, have you, Mr. Bowen? Oh, too right, Percy. I'll check myself later. Thanks a lot. Well, I'll check my perimeter fences first. Good night. Right, Mr. David, everything all right? Jolly good. Put him at offences. It's him that wants lucky, you know. <laughs> hey, you've not, have you? <laughs> a few drams, a good film on the video after a hard day's work, you can't beat it. I thought you were out on the tiles every night. Oh, come on, you know me better than that. Has nine pounds, Mike. Here, tell you who's a bit of a lad, no? Who? That Billy Walker. Oh? Yeah. Well, don't you know about him and your Ken's cub reporter? Well, of course you do. You saw him canoodling in the pub at lunchtime, didn't you? So? Well, aren't you a bit surprised? No. I bet your Ken is. Why should he be? Well, your Ken's right-hand woman and Billy Walker. Well, I bet you think she's slumming. <laughs> at least I do. Do you know what I think, Mike? I think it's time you stopped stopping in at night and start going out a bit more. You're turning into a right old gossip. You know what they say, don't you? Them as can do, them as can't talk about it. You're a bit sensitive, aren't you? About Walker, Sally and your Ken. See ya. What do you think you're up to? Oh, uh, good evening, officer. Just keep me eye on things, you know. Who are you? Uh, soaked in person from community centre. What exactly are you keeping an eye on, Mr. Sugden? Well, like you, whatever catches it, you know. I'm home watch. I thought you said you're from the community centre. That's right, I'm caretaker there. That's two streets from here. Well, I thought I'd just patrol a bit further afield. Down the back alley. Well, that's where you're most likely to come across something, isn't it? I think you'd better come to the station, Mr. Sugden. What for? For a chat. What about? We've had a report there's been a peeping Tom round here. My car and my colleagues just down the street. It's not far. Come on. You're making a mistake, you know. You're making a very big mistake. We I'm official. No, we don't make mistakes. All right. Yes, thank you. How's yourself? Oh, very well, thank you. <laughs> Anything I can do? No, thanks. Mr. Sugden. I thought I'd seen the last of you lot. Aye, yeah, sorry about last night. And so you should be as well. Pulled in as a peeping Tom, me, with a record as white as driven snow. I'd been a right mess if Councillor Roberts hadn't come to the station and vouched for me. Actually, I had a word with our crime prevention officer. The local lads have been taking a great deal of interest in your home watch scheme. And we hope last night's little misunderstanding won't put you off at all. 
put me off. Of course it's put me off. How can I put myself on the side of law and order when I've been branded a criminal? Yes, Mr. Sugman, take my word for it. You've not been branded as a criminal. I'm not with you, love. You don't know them round here. Spend time in cop shop, even if you're only painting and decorating. In the eyes of the general public, you're a criminal. Well, I hope you'll think differently, and when you do, that's where I am. I won't. If you're going to work, Mrs. Ogden, Robbins returns up that way. Uh, where do I put this? That's a good <laughs> question. I'm just trying to find somewhere to put my cup of tea. I don't know. Do you ever see such a tip? <laughs> Reminds me of our house, the day before I got wet. Yeah, me and all. Hey, yeah, listen, it's a bedspread. I got it at market, but don't tell Mavis that. Of course I won't. <laughs> Must have cost you, Bob, or two even so. You shouldn't have bothered. I've not got it for you. Oh, sorry. Hey, would you like a cup? I'd love one, but I'd better not, because I don't want Baldwin on my tail again. No, I shouldn't be here either. Hey, yeah. Uh, how's she taking it? Now, how do you think? <laughs> no, that's just what we didn't say. I live at the cabin in Rosamond Street, but I'm getting married from number seven, Coronation Street, and that's where we want the car to come for me. <sighs> no, but how could it have been right if I hadn't rung to check? You'd have come in for me, wouldn't you? <sighs> All right, look. It's number seven, Coronation Street, at 1.40 tomorrow afternoon. That's 20 to 2. Well, right, I'm just making sure that's all now. Are you sure you've got it right? Yes. Well, that's better. I've got a bone to pick with you. Half the girls in my factory went tomorrow afternoon off to go to your flaming wedding. Now, do you know what it's going to do to my production? It's going to ruin it. They can't do us a favour and have the wedding on Saturday, can you? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr Baldwin, I can't. It's all arranged. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that, should I? Oh, no, you shouldn't. I'm finding it hard to take a joke at the moment. I'm sorry. There, that's for you and the lucky lad. Oh, you shouldn't. Oh, yes, I should. Have a great day. Oh, thank you. Bye, love. Bye. Oh, well, Bye, love. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Your last day and all. Well, we haven't been very busy. Oh, good. Did you organise the car to pick me up tomorrow afternoon? I most certainly did. Well, you didn't make a very good job of it then, did you? Because he was coming here. He was what? He was going to come here to pick me up. Well, he must be balmy. I made it perfectly plain where he had to go. Well, not plain enough, apparently. I told him. I said, hang on a minute. How do you know all this? Have you been checking up on me? No, all I did was read. Is that how much you trust me that you to check up on every damn thing I do? Well, it's a good thing I did, Rita, isn't it? Otherwise, I'd have been sitting there tomorrow afternoon like Piffy on a rock bun. There's a wedding tomorrow. That's why you're having your suit cleaned. Mavis and Derek are getting itched, and we're going to watch them do it. Oh, Lord, is it tomorrow? As ever was. Well, you've cut it a bit fine, haven't you, with the suit? Ah, it'll be all right, as long as we have it back for dinner time. Now, then, is there anything special you want doing to it, like uh, retexturing or anything? Although, come to think of it, they probably won't have time to do that. Well, I don't want that anyway, just a straight pressing and cleaning. Right. Oh, and don't forget you're picking up that table lamp for the happy oh, couple. God. I'll be up to my eyes in it this afternoon. Well, send Sally then, but get it. <laughs> All right. Well, better get them papers shifted or else you get no dinner. Hey, how's it going, by the way? The big romance. What big romance? Billy and Sally. Still together, aren't they? Don't ask me. You know, it'll do him the world of good getting a sensible girl like her. He's a lucky lad. Which is more than he can say for her. Now, don't you get involved. Love's blind, you know, and it's got nothing to do with us. Well, I am her employer. I do have a sort of, uh, paternal concern. Yeah. Al's always interested in my little problems, but that's because he fancies me. The photographer's all fixed up, is he? Bring him up, see what load of rubbish I told him. Oh, now, Reed. I can be hurt, you know. Yes, he's all fixed, and he knows what he's doing, which is more than can be said for some folk. Oh. There just seems to be so much to do, I'm sure I've forgotten something. Get away with your rubbish. Morning, ladies. Hello. Morning. All set for tomorrow then, are we? Oh, I wish I could think so. Oh, don't go fretting, Chuck. All you can do is pray something goes wrong. Still, let's enjoy ourselves while we can, eh? Mm. Could I have two boxes of your best confetti love for me and the friends? Certainly, well, madam. I'm not sure that the Reverend Dunsworth likes confetti at all saints. Oh, they all say that, love. Hey, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll leave them in the packet. Then when we chuck them, you can pick them up and put them back on the shelves. How does that suit you? Very cooperative. Ah, <laughs> well, that's me all over, isn't it? <laughs> Hey, you. You're not supposed to see your bride the day before the wedding. Oh, no, Rita. It's the day of the wedding, before the actual ceremony. Oh, why, that's right. Oh, you've both got it wrong. It's unlucky to see your husband after you're married. 
I mean, that's when all your troubles start, isn't it, sure? Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, Mavis, love, I, I thought I'd bring Carl to see you before we meet in the church. Oh. So it won't come as too much of a shock. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mavis. It's lovely to meet you. I've heard all about you from the boss, and I was honoured when he asked me to be best man. And this is for you. From all the staff at work, with their very best wishes. Oh. It's an automatic tea maker. The oh. very latest. Well, they're rotten, spoiled sports. I mean, fancy just married and they get something to get them out of bed on a morning. <laughs> Mind you, come to think of it, I wish I'd have got a present like that. Get me away from our Jack. Something like Paul Newman. Jack's meals have been... <laughs> <laughs> Lucky man. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow when you've had a few. Um, uh, Derek, no, would you just pop upstairs with me for a minute? Oh, yeah. Hey, watch it, you two. Don't go jumping gum. Oh, no, no, it's just that I've, I've had a letter from your cousin Nora, and quite honestly, I can't make head in a tail of it. Oh, dear. Well, I don't know whether they're coming or not. You see, and there are four of them. It's going to play havoc with the catering arrangements, so I just thought maybe you could understand it better. Well, she always was a bit strange, was Nora. So, you're the best man. That's what they call me. Huh? Well, there's not a lot of competition, is there? <laughs> Well, that's what I heard. He was took into custody for doing something illegal up our back in. I don't think what it was. I'll tell you, Mrs. Hall. He took his lid, didn't he? Took these three women hostage on the way home from Bingo. And when the police finally nabbed him, he stood over them with his big butcher's cleaver dripping with blood. As he'd only killed two out of the three to let him out on bail, didn't they? You're kidding. Of course I am. Actually, they thought he was a peeping Tom. Well, that's bad enough. What they let him out for? Because he wasn't peeping. They exonerated him, Hilda. Oh, have they? Well, I haven't. Not that he'd have seen much if he'd gone up to his tricks round the back of our house. I don't believe in offering temptation to them sort. I always close my curtains proper. <laughs> you should keep them open. That way it frightened them to death. <laughs> hey, Percy's on the walk back, though. Trying to find out who shocked him to the police. Oh, dear. That could be nasty. <laughs> Ah, you've just missed William Hickey, and Nigel Dempster's been on the blower all morning. He wants to know if there's any truth in the rumour that you are nuts about it. Tell him I'm working. I'll do that. What you gonna... Morning, young miss. I've heard of girls preferring older men, but you can take things too far, you know. Eat your heart out, Lynch. Thank you. The usual? Why not? Well, I slept safer in my bed, I don't mind admitting. So did I. I thought it was an excellent scheme. And that isn't something I say about all Mr. Sugden's little endeavours. Hey, do you reckon he'll pack it in after last night's little kerfuffle? Oh, I've no idea, but I hope not. Can I join you, ladies? Oh, oh yes, of course. <laughs> what do you think? What's that, love? Well, do you think Mr. Sugden's likely to carry on with his home wash scheme? Oh, no, I shouldn't think so. Not after what he said to police last night, anyway. And I can't say I'm sorry. He's an anarchist, that fella, and doesn't know it. <coughs> Hey, right, Percy. Good evening. Whatever the council's having, an half for, for myself, please. Right, love. Hope you'll forgive me, ladies. Normally I would include you in this, but this is in the nature of something special between me and the councillor, for speaking up on my behalf in a time of need. Hey, Percy, you will be carrying on, won't you, with this scheme of yours, this own watch thing? Oh, no, no, that's over and done with. No, I've lost patience here in the eyes of the community. That's what the police say, you're innocent. Uh, that's as maybe, but it uh, doesn't alter the fact that mud sticks. And you ladies, bless you, might think one way, but it's the majority of counts. Public regard, that's what's needed in matters of this nature. And innocent or not, the moment I was arrested, and by a lady policeman, which didn't help, the moment I was arrested, that public regard was completely shattered. Still, if there's a spate of crime round here, I can always say I did my best. Oh, hi. Cheers, councillor. Ah, oh, cheers. Uh, cheers. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Uh, keep it quiet, but could I have a Weatherfield Gazette? You're joking. The opposition? <laughs> I'd like to know what they're getting up to. Oh. Mavis, uh, would you mind serving Ken? Oh, just on my way to the florist. That's all right. He only wants a gazette. Thank you. Thank you. There. You just sold your last newspaper. After flogging God knows how many over the last 11 years. Oh, I'm honoured indeed. I shall frame it, Mavis. I wish you wouldn't say things like that. Why not? Well, they've been very happy years in spite of everything. You've happier years to come. Yes, I know. But... Sorry. Must be a bit of a shock being taken down and dusted after all these years. Well, I think it's not a good idea having someone on the lookout all the time. I mean, anybody could break into our house, murder me, and this one wouldn't even wake up. <laughs> ah, Jack, same. And if he did wake up and see what were happening, like as not, he'd roll over and go back to sleep. <laughs> Is that definite, Alfie? No chance of him starting up again. Well, hey, hold on. 
Are you afraid to know? Ivy, if I went to the pros, I'd have to pay through the nose for that kind of security. The more money I save, the more I can lavish on you girls. Oh. <laughs> well, I think someone should try to persuade Mr. Sugden, because we all seem to be agreed. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you have a word with him after all the local Mr. Fitz? Yeah, yeah. 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 go on now. If it'll have save you sitting up all night holding my hand in session. <laughs> <laughs> all right then, but what good it'll do, I don't know. <laughs> Should we be having egg sandwiches at a hen party? Isn't it a bit, um, cannibalistic? Is that the word you're looking for? Shouldn't be at all surprised. <sighs> I wish I'd never let Edith talk me into having this party at all. She's very forceful. Oh, go on, do you good. Well, I don't see why. I mean, all I wanted was a light supper in an early night. Oh, let your hair down. Be having an early night tomorrow. Oh. Well, they've not started coming already. Paint a smile on. You're the hostess. Oh, I thought it was somebody important. No, it's only boozy Edith. Oh. Hello, Hello, Chuck. I'm glad to see you still standing. How's she been? Marvellous. We've been practising with houseful of fellas. That's the spirit. And here's some more. Two rhubarb and one potato. Guaranteed to knock Dean Martin cock-legged. I like Dean Martin, don't you? I do. He's cuddly. Oh, he is. <laughs> Well, Mavis, we're going to make this a night to remember, because you won't have many of them with my loving brother. Still, he's steady, bless him, which is more than we'll be with any luck. You're not going to stand there yakking all night, are you? Take your coat off. Come and help me with these right. sandwiches. When are they coming? Any minute now, and a pound says Hilda Ogden's first. I don't know what Percy at all. Not had a chance. I gave him a knock, there was nobody in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, would you believe it, the devil himself? We were just talking about you, my lad. Give him a pint for a drink. That's very kind of you, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, Alf wants a word with you. Yeah. Oh, what can I do for you, Councillor? I heard you were knocking at my door. Yes, well, uh, I've been asked to uh, to ask you, uh, uh, well, if you go on with this, this uh, home watch service thing. After what happened? Mm. Well, that don't make no difference, Percy. We all realise it was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. go on, Percy, I'll protect me. Are them your sentiments and all, Councillor? Yeah, of course they are. We all feel the same way. Oh, I well, I'm touched. I am. Honest. I'm touched. That doesn't matter. We still want you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you to say so, Mr. Baldwin. Very kind. Well, in answer to public demand, all I can say, I'll give it another go. Oh, oh, Please, Mr. Sutton, it really is a wonderful job you're doing. Well, praise from you, Mrs. Bishop, it's praise it is. What can I get you? Oh, no, I won't. No, Thank no, you. Come on, we must be going. Oh, yeah, we're off to Mavis's oh, party. Some other time, perhaps. Yes, well, I shan't need reminding. <laughs> Right, I'd better get my patrols worked out. Now, who wants to be first on this? Hey, is that the time? Aye, is it? Let's get the time. I'm going to go down to town. Oh, it's happening. Yeah. 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 Oh, I can have a drink. Oh. And then he, then he can't remember where you've put the yeah, list. Yeah, no, that's right. Dry white wine, Deirdre. Oh, that sounds like me. No, thank you. What are you drinking? Oh, rhubarb wine. Edith's homemade. You want to watch that? Well, everybody says that about homemade wine, don't they? Yeah. I think it's a joke, really, because it's very smooth. Wait till it kicks you in the teeth from inside. <laughs> Stash the hooch, girls. The feds are here. Ooh, I love those gangster films. They all had Roderick Crawford in them. Terrible on his feet he was, poor devil. Is this the house of the living dead? Oh, she's worse than me, that one. She's worse than everybody. <laughs> Blood donors in here. Sit yourself down next to the Bride of Dracula. Oh, yes, you mind? Do you have any other like Bride of Dracula? Never mind sitting down. Come and get yourself something to eat. Do you want a little something to help out? Oh, you shouldn't have a I wasn't expecting that. I'm not one of your ordinary guests, you know. We go back a long way. You were at my engagement party to Ernest. Do you remember? I'll never forget. I got very drunk and very jealous. Mm. Now it's my turn to be jealous. Are you all too all right? You are all right. Are you all right, Mrs. Sorkin? Somebody looking after you? Oh, yes, thank you very nicely. No, I was just saying, you get a better class of conversation when there are only ladies in the company. We're on about the spirit world, weren't we, Hilda? Yeah, well, it does happen to be one of my pet subjects. And it's one that women know more about than men, you know, being more on the sensitive side. Oh, definitely. Who needs fellas? Hey, careful. Maybe she's just getting herself itched to one. I'm not saying they don't have their uses, but it's nice to be without him for a couple of hours, isn't it? Yeah.
Are you all ready then? For tomorrow? <laughs> yes. It's a bit late if she isn't, isn't it? I don't suppose there's any chance of having a peek at your wedding house. Oh, do you want to? Yeah. Oh, yes. We're nothing if we're not nosy, are we, Elder? Oh, you speak for yourself, you. <laughs> I'll bring it down then. Oh, lovely. I'm going to have something to eat. Do you think that's a bad wine? Yeah, it's a Something like that. Yes, that's Where's she? Have you gone? She's bringing a wedding dress down to show us. Oh, eh. Hey, get your anchors out, girls. Time for a good scry. Oh, God. Oh, doesn't seem very excited, does she? No, I think she's a bit stunned. Oh. I was like that. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it's a nice feeling, though, isn't it? Very romantic. And I'm all for a bit of romance. Oh, I am, I know. What are you going to do, then? Stay here till I shut up shop? <laughs> or go home and wait till I call? I may as well wait here. You just can't take yourself away from me, can you? I can't trust you. Somebody might come in through that door who just might take your fancy. Oh, it'd have to be somewhat special. <laughs> and... Well, they're a bit strong, them too, aren't they? Mind you, I don't suppose it matters. Long don't interfere with the work, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't be having that, can we? Hey, here they come. Hey. Into the Valley of Death. Hello there. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, everything going all right your end? Couldn't be better. Are you? Oh, yes, I think we're all organised, aren't we, Carl? Down to the last comma. Can't let the boss down. <laughs> Never mind about letting him down. Let's boost him up a bit. I know a nice little place to go before you join the Legion of the Damned. Exotic dancers, exotic booze, exotic waitresses. What do you say, eh? Sounds great. I'm going. Oh, I think not. Uh, better have an early night. Keep in full possession of my faculties. That's not the way to look at it tomorrow. You are having a major operation. Get yourself anaesthetised. <laughs> It'll be your last chance. Oh, uh, uh, I think not, really. Thanks all the same. Well, you'll have a drink anyway, will you? Oh, certainly, oh, yes. Right. Can I have a half a shandy? <sighs> half a shandy, please, Bet. No. Oh, Billy will serve you, love. I'm off to my party. Right? <laughs> yeah, go on, then. Leave me to do all the work. Oh, never mind. I'm sure you're in good hands. Oh, the very best. <laughs> Chips. How do you do it? That's a fifth on the trot, that is. You've got to be scientific. Just because it's dominoes, it doesn't mean you don't have a system, you know. What system? If I told you, you'd know, wouldn't you? Best bit please, uh, landlord. Been a grand day, hasn't it? Hey, it was you that phoned the police about Sugden, wasn't it? If I told you, you'd know, wouldn't you? But why don't you go and tell him? I reckon you're scared. Me? Scared of him? Don't kill me. Well, go on then, tell him. All right, then, if that's what you want, follow me. I put it to this officer and said, now, do I look like a peeping top? And he said you didn't. Yeah. Of course he did. <laughs> Excuse me. Could I have a word? Yes, lad. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, I just thought I'd let you know that it was me that tipped the police off about you the other night. So, uh, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to buy you a pint. That's what I'm going to do about it. Landlord. Give this young man the pint of your finest. I told him, I told the police to be one of my lot, and sure enough, I was right. Well done, lad. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about, <laughs> seeking whom he may devour. The pistol according to St. Peter, and he knew what he was talking about. Be sober, be vigilant. Do you want your pint back? Not that flaming sober, lad, but vigilant. Definitely vigilant. Thank you, Lando. Hey, you made a good barmaid, Edith. You don't believe in overfilling them, do you? Sit your own interest. You don't want to get falling down drunk, do you? Of course I do. What do you think I've come for? There I go, I don't know. I ain't having time. I might have known. I might have known. Don't know why. Don't know why. I'm not in the sky. So I'll give it to rest me around. I'm not in the sky.
Billy Walker, isn't it? Making me do an early turn before I can go to a wedding. Do you know you cut yourself shaving? Uh, yes, I do, actually. I got this sharp pain in my face as he sent a message to my brain, and later on the message was confirmed when I felt the blood running down my chin. Oh, hoity toity toity, I'm only telling you. Oh, give us a bag of sugar, Alfie. We've got a brew going forward across the road. Oh, huh? right. All set for a wedding, Ivy? Yeah, just about. We're finishing early, Vera and me. Mind you, it's still going to be heck of a rush and get into that church on town. Oh, don't tell me. I've got to serve in Rovers till half past one. Oh, hey, listen. If any of the girls want to, tell them to get over here before one o'clock, because after that, there'll be no use hammering on that door, because it's going to be shut until tomorrow morning. All right, love. Hey, do you know you've cut yourself? Yes, I do, thank you. Well, I'm only telling you. I mean, we do want you looking your best, don't we, when you stood in that church giving the bride away? Now then, you do know what you've got to do, don't you? Of course I know. Well, I mean, we don't want any cock-ups now, do we? There won't be any. I know exactly what I'm doing. Oh, I see. You did that on purpose, then? That cut on your face while you were shaving? Thank you very much. Goodbye. The flowers have come. Oh, Mavis. Look at your bouquet. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, yes, it's very nice. It will look wonderful with your wedding dress. Oh, it's so exciting. Oh, it must have been Edith's rhubarb wine, you know. I mean, it didn't taste very strong. And anything old made like that, you'd think it'd be all right. You really ought to have something to eat. Mm. Oh, I couldn't, Emily. I couldn't face it. I'll be all right if you, if you just leave me. Well, yes, but... Uh, Time is going on, Mavis, and you've a lot to do. Suppose I made you some toast? Oh, no, Emily, I couldn't. Right, that's me finished work for the day, and if nobody gets the evening papers, well, it's just too bad. <laughs> oh, aren't those flowers beautiful? Yes, aren't they? Oh. Have you shut the shop? No, I've left our new girl in charge. Sonia, she's called. I've chucked her in at deep end, so she'll either sink or swim. Well, you can't expect her to be super efficient right from the start, Rita. I mean, it took me years. No one between you and me, you never did manage it. <laughs> now, don't look hurt, Mavis. You're going to be a married woman, a lady of leisure. Just think, no more getting up while it's still dark to mark papers up. No. <laughs> Oh, so we you? Look as if you're going to a funeral instead of your own wedding. Oh, go on, Marita. I've got a splitting headache. You're not allowed to have headache on your wedding day. You have to wait till novelty's worn off. I keep telling her she'd feel a lot better if she'd eat something. Of course she would. Egg custard, that's what you want. And I've brought three home for us. Ooh. We'll have one each with a cup of coffee. Ooh. No ifs and buts. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try and force it down. Oh. And old Mrs. Wharton from Buckley Street brought this in ah. for you. I think she was hoping to see you. She come in special with a bad leg and everything. And she had her teeth in. And she says, I had to tell you to wish you all the luck in the world. Oh, that was very nice of her. Right, a cup of coffee and a custard. Then you get yourself in the bath, shake yourself, because you've got a lot to do. Oh, I wish you wouldn't keep organising it, Rita. Well, somebody has to. And it's your wedding day. And I'm going to see that you enjoy every minute of it. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to manage when you go swanning off to this wedding. Oh, give over. You'll be all right. Half your regulars will be there anyway. It beats me why she couldn't have the do here. She'll not do any better at the Bella Vista. Oh, I can understand that. But I can't say I blame her. Well, she wants it done properly, you see. She doesn't want to show herself up in front of Derek's friends. If she was frightened of showing herself up, she wouldn't have invited you to, would she? It's quite uncalled for, is that? She knows full well I'd not show her up. Take no notice, Hilda. Be like me. When somebody cracks on, you're not a perfect lady. Keep a dignified silence. Then when you get a chance, spit in the rail. Yes, please, Billy. 
In the pint there, mate. Do you think you should be having another one? You'll be a long time in the church. Well, then, if I have to, I'll nip out. What are you having? No, 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 I'll stick with that. Where's your Alan Vera? They said they'd be here by now. I haven't got plenty of time yet, love. Look, uh, just relax and enjoy yourself. I still don't think you should be drinking pints. No. Well, Miguel, it's a wedding. You can't have a couple of pints at a wedding. Do you remember ours? I could have to get it. Do you regret it? Gail, for me and you got married, I didn't know the true meaning of happiness, and then it was too late. <laughs> Someone said that at our wedding. Do you regret it? Ask me again tonight. Hey, you did order this taxi, did you? Of course I did. I was thinking it a bit late. Oh, still with all that now, Mr. Ball, was it? I was just saying to Bat, you wouldn't mind running us to the church in your motor, would you? Sorry, Hilda, rule of mine, never drink and drive. Well, you've not had a drink yet, have you? Oh, you're right. Quick, give us a large scotch, will you? Let's face it, Hilda, you're hopeless when it comes to twining fellas around your little finger. Bet! Bet, your taxi's out here. What did yeah. that tell you? Oh, yeah. I'll see you later, sunshine. Yeah, well, what time are you back? Well, if I pull a nice young man at this wedding, tomorrow. If not, six o'clock. Yeah. Talk yeah. about a rush, love, honest. Do I look all right? Yeah. It's lovely. <coughs> yeah, you're all right. Kid. Let's have a drink. Okay. Sorry, Vera. No time. I've got to go. Oh, just a quick one, kid. I can't go to a wedding without a drink inside me. Blimey, I'll kill you, lad, at me all. Oh, come on, Vera. Oh, that looks very nice, Mavis. Oh, yes. Do you really like it? I mean, you don't think it's too... Oh, no, you look lovely, doesn't she, Rita? You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Derek's a lucky man. He'll be proud of you. Hey, do you know what we forgot? What? What's wrong? Well, you've got to ask something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Oh, that's just superstition. Never mind what it's old, just. Best to be on the safe side, I am. Well, you've got the blue slip on, and the dress is new, of course. And mm. Alf will be leading you up the aisle. He's old. <laughs> that only leaves some at borrowed. Just a minute. Here, tuck that up your sleeve. Oh, it's just an old wife's tale, really. Don't knock it. That's how they get to be old wives. <laughs> well, I think I'd better set off for the church. It'll give me plenty of time if I go now. You look wonderful, Mavis. Thank you. <laughs> See you in church. Time. Bye. I'll turn around. Let's have a good look at you. How's your hangover now? Oh, I'm all right now. Good. I knew it would be. Egg custards. You can't beat them. Do you know? Princess Di could not look any nicer than you do right now. Oh. Honest, you look great. Except what? Well, we've got a quarter of an hour before Alf comes with car. Sit down, I'll do your nails. Oh, Rita, do you think so? I mean, in, in church. Trust your Auntie Rita. Look, hey, come here. I told you it's so early. Look, we have a drink. Bill will be getting plenty at reception. Well, I hope so. Once went to a Methodist wedding. Strongest thing I got to drink. We're an orange aid. Orange aid. Oh, shut up, Bill. We're at a wedding, not a flaming orgy. Mm. Hello. Hi. Who's that? Derek's sister. <laughs> there you are. Now, when you stand there in front of the altar, you'll know you're perfect from top to toe. Rita. What? I can't do it. What do you mean? I can't go through with it. Nerves. That's all it is. I'll get you a little drink and I'll have one with you. No, I, I'm sorry about this, Rita. But I mean it. Oh, give over. In 15 minutes, you'll be walking up that aisle right as rain. No. I'm sorry, but there isn't going to be a wedding. I can't marry Derek. Hello, Emily. Hey, did you see him? 
I'm the bishop's gonna sound groom sad. She'll be those on champ ride sad. Well, it don't really matter all side she's on. It's not a battle. Don't good yourself. It's funny how life turns out, isn't it? I mean, who would have thought Mavis Riley would be getting married eh? at her age? There's hope for you yet. Hilda. Huh? If we weren't in church, I'd stamp on your hat. I realise I should have spoken up sooner, Rita. I know that, but I, I can't marry him. It wouldn't be right. Why can't you marry him? What's made you change your mind? I haven't changed my mind, not really. I think I've known all along deep down that I couldn't marry him. Oh, honestly, Mavis, you can't arrange to get married and ten minutes before the ceremony calmly turn round and say I can't go through with it. Well, I'm sorry if you think I'm being unreasonable, Rita. Well, you are. You're being totally unreasonable. No, I was unreasonable before. I should never have said I'd marry him in the first place when I knew it wasn't right. And why the hell did you say yes if that's how you felt? It just seemed easier at the time. I mean, I meant to say no. I was going to say no and then... I heard myself saying yes, and then it was too late, and I didn't want to hurt his feelings. Well, my God, Mavis, you're going to hurt him now. How do you think he's going to feel? You're going to crucify him. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying to get hold of Derek. See if he can talk some sense into you. Come on. Come on. Oh, I feel terrible about this. I never wanted to hurt him, but I can't go through with this. There's no answer. What he'll have left. He'll be in the church waiting for you. Da 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 my word, Mavis, you look great. I really mean that, you do. You, you, you look knockout. Alf, would you mind waiting for us in the car? There's something wrong. Alf, if you'd just give us another minute. Yeah, we want to get off, you know. We don't want to be late, do we? <laughs> oh, well, all right. So hang on, a bit of a hold up. Women, eh? <laughs> well, Derek will be in church now, or on his way, with the ring all ready, expecting to marry you, like you agreed. What are you going to do? I'm not right for Derek. He thinks you are. Derek's not right for me. I think I've always known it really right from the start. Well, it still comes down to this. Why, then, did you say yes? Oh. I'm trying to understand you, Mavis, but by heck, it's not easy. Well, it was always expected, wasn't it, that I'd agree. I, I, I don't think it ever occurred to Derek that I could refuse him. And then he... He hustled me along, making plans. Oh, I'm not blaming Derek. It's not his fault. It's my fault. Is it Victor that's brought all this on? Is it him that no. you want? No, it's not Victor. Well, he's just the same as Derek, really. They both think they want me, but they don't really know me. Neither of them's taken the trouble to really look at me and think about me, the person that I am. What they want is something in their imagination. It's not me. What do you want? I mean, are you sure you're not expecting too much of Derek? He's not perfect, but who is? And there aren't any perfect marriages, you know. But he's a nice man, and he does want you. It's no good, Reed. I can't marry him. I know I'm behaving badly. 
and I'm hurting him. Everybody will say what a terrible person that I am. No, no, they won't. No, they won't. Because you're not. And I'm not going to try and force you. If your mind's made up and you're sure you've made the right decision. Just wish you'd made it a bit sooner, that's all. Because somebody's got to go to that church and tell Derek that you're not coming. Where's the ex, the bridegroom? I don't know. He's late. Oh, you can say that again. It's gonna make a right shamble to my day, is this? I'm supposed to be the other side of Weatherfield at three o'clock. Well, I'm sorry, but it's not my fault. Hang on. I think this is the best man's car. About time. <laughs> Rides here and all. My word, talk about cutting the fat. Where on earth have you been, Carl? It's five past... Where's Derek? What's happened? Oh, my God, Mavis is here. I'll just tell her driver to go round the block a few times. Hang on, Edith. Hang on a minute. Hey, hey, hang on, lovely. Let's have one of you getting out of the car. It makes a nice first picture for the album. I'm not the bride. <sighs> You're too early. Derek's not here yet. There's been some delay. Where's Mavis? I'm very sorry to have to tell you this, Edith. She's not coming. Not coming? No, she can't go through with it. She's terribly upset, but her mind's made up. Oh, my God. How are we going to tell poor Derek? Uh, excuse me. Well, the thing is, Derek won't be here. He's, uh... He's not coming, I'm afraid. No, it's Mavis that's not coming. Well, I don't know anything about that. I've just come from Derek now. I've had a terrible time with him. He's, uh, well, he's very upset in that, but he can't marry her. Do you mean he's dumping her? He's leaving her flat? He's very sorry. Sorry? I'll smash his teeth in. Just a moment, just a moment. According to you, it's Mavis who's let Derek down, so don't start on Derek. Charming. This is my bread and butter we're talking well, about here. You know, I mean, I've mean, heard of one person not turn up for the wedding, but never both of them. Do you know how sensitive he is? He must have said something. Oh, that's flaming. Charming, that is. Sorry, sorry, just a minute. Hold on a minute. Listen, there's no one shouting the odds out here, is there? If there's not going to be a wedding, somebody's going to have to tell the vicar. Oh, no, come on, be fair. Look, he's got nothing to do with me. Daft old beggars forgot, Brown. I'm sorry to have to tell you, gathered here as you are to celebrate the marriage of Derek Wilton and Mavis Riley, that the wedding will not now take place. What on earth? The dirty swiney's ditch You having one, Percy? Aye, go on, I'll have half. Don't say she's making a mistake, you know. 
Oh, You're just jealous, Purse. You've always fancied Mavis yourself. Well, why not? She's a handsome well, woman. She's too good for him. Blimey, Purse, are you still fancying women? I thought at your age you wouldn't bother. What do you mean, bother? It's never been any bother to me. Well, what he means, Purse, is there must come a time when a fellow is uh, no longer interested, know what I mean? Well, if and when it does happen, I'll let you know. Well, I'm in that case, give him a pint, not a half. <laughs> When you think the amount of money the average man spends on a woman in his lifetime, it must be staggering. A fortune, mate, and not a small fortune either. I bet with the money that we spend on women in our lifetimes, we could all buy Rolls Royces. Yeah. Or in your case, Curly, a three-wheeler. <laughs> and it's not just dresses, neither. We've lost half a day's pay, me and you. Well, it can't be Mavis's fault. Well, I never said it was, did I? What are you lot doing back already? Well, there were no wedding, mother. Left her it lurched into the dirty dog. Never turned up, did it? You're kidding. No, it's right. We was all sat there in the church, waiting and waiting. He never showed up, that Derek. No, Alf Roberts called. He had a word with Vicar. And Vicar and said it we... were all off. The yeah, what did I tell you? I said he were a bad un. He won't shoot in a man like that. Well, I was talking to Rita outside church like because I thought it were Derek. But Rita said Mavis had changed her mind anyway. She didn't want to marry him. Well, she'd have to say that, will not she? To save her face, will not she? Well, she didn't turn up at church, though, did she? Well, I suppose she knew already. I suppose he phoned and told her. I wish I'd been there. It must have been a right laugh. <laughs> oh, come on, Terry. I mean, how would you like it being discarded in public like that? Yeah. Thrown aside like an old glove. It's the humiliation. She'll never be able to hold her head up after this. Frightened of marriage. That's the top and bottom of it. Mavis! She must be upstairs. Mavis, are you up here? Oh, she's not upstairs. She's not in the house. I don't think. I don't think she'd do anything silly. No. No, she wouldn't. Not Mavis. That I'm sure of. Hey, look. What's this? Dear Rita, I'm going away for a few days. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. But I can't face people just at the moment, Mavis. P.S. I'm very sorry about all the trouble I've caused to you and Derek and everybody. That didn't bring her much luck, did it? Next, today on Plus, the soap hour continues with Emmerdale, whilst over on Breeze, Roddy Llewellyn's indoor garden. <laughs>